it's, it's looking not too bad. Uh, we're looking at a, a, a SWR power meter. Uh, I'm not doing too badly. And the modulation uh, on, the, on the, uh, the combination meter for the air seems to be back and back and forth. It's going to be about 250. Well, it, it sounds quite good, particularly for a uh, Viking. Maybe you even worked on it a bit uh, to improve the audio. It does sound good. You know, the question of, of how do you judge your modulation uh, is a very good one, especially for AM operators. And uh, what I did with my first uh, phone rig, which was a, a Ranger, uh, the original Ranger, is I, I put a... Um, 555 timer chip in it. How about that for blasphemous? And um, and connected the input through some protective diodes and lots of dropping resistors to the uh, B plus, so that it was set up so that when the B plus um, the modulated B plus reached just a few volts, it would cause an LED to blink on for. Uh, uh, half a second. Actually, it, it turned on an incandescent light that was already in the, the Ranger uh, behind one of the um, behind one of the uh, lenses, not the power not the power indicator, but the other one, which was at the time unused. And um, that is a uh, you know if you like if you like building simple circuits, you can always do that. Uh, just use a uh, chip like that. Basically, it's a comparator. Uh, but it's a comparator with a with a timer circuit in it, so it's a 555. Um, it's also important to realize that tetrodes reach cutoff, are uh, a carrier cutoff, before their anode reaches zero volts. Uh, triodes, it's it is about zero volts, but tetrodes will reach cutoff before the plate reaches zero. So um, you have to sort of adjust it depending upon, you know, you have to compare it to something. Oscilloscopes are always good. You have a monitor, you have a station monitor, but not on that rig. But so yeah, there are there are other ways you can do it. And then of course the best way is to just get a full blown modulation monitor, which I think that one of these options all AM operators should have, because um, it really uh, goes a long way to uh, having a good, clean and loud signal. The fine line between loud and and messy. And one BCG.
right, Bill, enjoy your dinner and your evening. I uh, appreciate you getting on. You know, that's sort of the thing that uh, that AMOP should be doing is helping each other out because we want more of us uh, in general. So, anyway, um, so we'll, uh, we'll see. Um, hopefully... Uh, you know, I, I've heard of uh, Joe GMS. I've, I don't think I've worked him in years. But anyway, um, 7-3 for now from N1 BCG. Uh, and uh, Gary, I got your message here. Oh, La Rencontre. Very nice. And so Gary says, I fear the XYL night at 7.30 will be tough copy on 75 meters. Well, ha- we don't know. Um, the weather is supposed to be good tomorrow. Thank goodness. Uh, and that's an hour chronologically, an hour from now. It's supposed to be 7 o'clock. Yes, tomorrow night on 3885, ladies' night, 75 meters. Oh, my gosh. The 3% of ham radio operators are going to become the uh, the majority for, uh, for one evening. It should be very exciting. So let's see what else is going on on 3875. Yeah, seven three, Bill uh, from W two B T K. Shame. Uh, I, w- I was going to tell you about the external modulator, but I guess some other time. Seven three. If you're still even anywhere near a radio, which you're probably not. He may have heard that, just not transmitting. Good evening, Chuck. I did. He just had some some uh, Viking question. Okay. Uh, this is a Ranger. This is came up from Alabama. And it's 55. I guess you could say. No food is over the same. Anyway, I heard you talking the other day. Well, first of all, I said you uh, I think somewhat humorous sort of response to Doug Brown. I've seen some before, but don't look like humorous today. Anyway, uh, well, you have something like you couldn't stop the airplane? Uh, the uh, story I told about starting a plane was uh, hand propping, which is not a great idea. No, that is a no no. You can get hurt. It's real easy. Yes, you missed the story about how I unintentionally hand propped a plane. We had a low battery, and so my idea was I would push the uh, propeller just up to where the compression uh, part was, and then uh, stand back, and then give a uh, indication to my friend who was at the controls to then kick over the uh, starter motor. But apparently it was already in the left mag only position, and uh, the engine started with me standing next to the prop. Fries, huh? Standing next to a food processor when you didn't expect to. Oh, that's sort of a nasty. I I dropped the tape off at 150 a couple of times. You know, but uh, beyond that, I, I realized that it was not a good thing to do. And it came through with a big engine, it would be just a disaster. So, anyway, that's uh, just a good thing not to do. And, uh, this is the first time I've tested this ranger. Uh, it's, it's, it's amazing what people do in this park. I mean, I just can't believe it. I've got to tell a lot what they did. And then you're trying to figure out why they did it afterwards. It's just nothing different. Well, of all people, I am absolutely 100% confident you'll figure that one out. Well, you know, something I spent almost a year doing a uh, data
For folks who can appreciate what uh, brand new uh, EF Johnson gear looks like, check out uh, Chuck's website. He's very modest about it. He never talks about it, but you should. Because um, when I looked on there, I saw, what was it, a, a, a Valiant you had restored? It looked like it just came out of the box. It was like in a, it was like it was in a, um, it was a time capsule. Like it was built by E.F. Johnson and then opened up decades later. Uh, what do you do? You, you silk screened all the logos and everything? Everything is stripped down. But anyway, uh, rather than go into a big, long description of, of things that are out of my, uh, uh, how to beyond my capabilities here. You're, are, is it johnsonresto.com or do, what, what's the correct website? That I don't usually get right. It's Secrets. I don't know how you get a chassis to look like it's brand new and how you can get a faceplate, which was all dinged up to look brand new, and how you get the paint to look brand new and the logo. And, uh, you know, the Transformers look brand new. It's like, how does this guy do this? You know, this, I, I try to clean, clean chassis, you know, and give it the soaking of rubbing it with this and with that and yet it never quite comes out the same. Oh! And the uh, the tank coil. That's another mystery. Yours looks like it came out of a, uh, you know, like the, the silver drawer. Mine looks like it's, um, no. <laughs> it's clean, but that's about it. So, I don't know. Uh, yeah, you do uh, you do some uh, pretty uh, pretty magical work to that to, to that gear. And one BCG. And now batting for the New York Yankees. Who's this? I heard a rumor, Bananarama, fun song. That's tomorrow night at 7 o'clock, 3885, hosted by Carrie, KC2U. I can't say it, only she can say it, KC2UFU. Um, so, yes, good. Glad you're, uh, glad you're ready for it, and I'm very happy you heard about it. Excellent. Well, WB2MEW, I'll be with you tomorrow night, and uh, thanks. Got the message and uh, signing off for now. I'm listening in. Thanks. Well, that's it. Who's this and where are you? This is WB2MEW. I'm uh, Felice. I'm in Saratoga Springs, New York. Uh, I've had this. Uh, I had a different call sign most of my life. Grew up in a ham household. My dad was WB2MEW when he passed away. Uh, no one grabbed, my son was going to grab his uh, call sign and he didn't. And so I, I take a hold of this. Don't know life without him radio. Oh, I know some people up in Saratoga Springs. Maybe we, kn we both know them. But anyway, all right, good. Glad that uh, glad that you're going to be all set for tomorrow night. It should be a lot of fun, and uh, I know that uh, it it uh, 
It was a huge success back on February 1st when it was tried sort of experimentally, you know, for fun from W1AW, but um, when you combine uh, W1AW and Ladies' Night all in one, well, you things like that break the ionosphere, and that certainly did happen. So good. So we'll see if it can happen again tomorrow night. I'm looking forward to breaking that air ionosphere. WB2NEW out. All right, 7-3. So there you go, Carrie. I don't know if you're tuned in or any of your listeners, your your um, your peeps are tuned in. But see, you've got more folks who are going to be there in mass for your event tomorrow night. How much fun is that? Is it a net? I don't know. It's just it's just um, an event to encourage YLs, XYLs. I don't know, ladies, to uh, to get on the air. They are um, um, from a from a licensing standpoint. It's not like three percent, three percent of ham radio licenses have been issued to females, and yet you just don't really run into YLs, XYLs. I don't even know what they like to be called all that often and so when that does happen it's a big deal so why not just make a whole event out of it it's experimental yeah I mean okay for example look at the event from W1AW on February 1st you had four ladies who are participating in it that that uh, for that for that evening. You had Carrie, Stephanie. Both of them are. I, I'm, I think they're both extras. They're both super deep into ham radio. Do all kinds of stuff. Build their own equipment. Stephanie's Stephanie's ham radio resume is just like goes on in chapters. You have to actually break it into chapters because all, all the stuff that she's been doing. Very involved in ham radio. Um, and then you have Tanya, uh, Miss K3FEF. I forget her. K, uh, del, uh, what is it? KW3TKP. Is that right? Anyway, uh, who has <clears throat> who has her extra class license but never gets on? Never gets on. What's up with that? I'm not shaming you, Tanya. I'm saying this is the reason for doing a ladies' night event. And then you've got Lisa, KB3 WFV stroke wife, uh, who um, is interested in ham radio but has not gotten her license because what she hears is that's just all guys talking. So the ladies' night event at W1AW was those four uh, doing it up. And uh, maybe more of that will encourage more ladies to get on and, uh, you know, feel like there's more for them. So why not, right? That's the real world. Sorry, folks. Sorry for the chauvinists out there, but it's a, it's a, uh, it's a co-ed world out there. And Ham Radio would probably be better if it were co-ed as well. Whoops. Hey, Clark. Oh, man, that's probably loud. Can you hear my blower in the background? That's that's loud. Oh, that sounds like Jim's. Wow. Yeah. There's nothing I can do about that, man. That's like 90. It's almost 100 decibels sea-weighted over there with the... Um, what do you call that? SPL meter? Dang. Yeah. <laughs> this sucks. I have to move this thing uh, somewhere else for sure. For sure, for sure. W2BTK on Montana Mountain in beautiful New Jersey. I have an idea. Why don't you mount it below the ham shack? And put in uh, duct work so that it comes, so the air comes up and goes through your amp. That's what I'm gonna do. Um, I gotta cut a hole in the floor so it'll draw from the basement 
and then this thing will be on top, but it'll have like duct on it, so it'll be much quieter. And then it'll just re like 90 down to the floor and return right back into the basement. That's the plan anyway. The fan's going to be in the basement also? No, the fan's going to be on top. Why don't you put the fan in the basement? Because a lot of that noise is just the, the uh, it's a result of the, the air across the, the uh, blades. So if you had that down below also, that would uh, solve a lot of your noise issue. Yeah, but then I have to run like a, a pretty, you know, substantial size duct if I'm going to pull air from the top and turn it and, and go down and put the air handler way over there. You know, it's got to be real big. If it's on top and I'm just pushing air, then I can use, you know, much smaller human-sized duct stuff. I think if you use uh, your usual, like, air conditioning, HVAC duct size, and then and then brought it down when it gets to the uh, to the actual transmitter, that would work fine. Yeah, there's a couple ways I could do it, but I need to move the amp somewhere else. I don't want to make the hole in the middle of the floor over here, so I'm thinking about that. But is this even like? I mean, there's so much background noise. It's crazy. Like it's loud in here, man. Is that even usable? Like, does it sound yellowy? You know, it's not that bad. Uh, and if you put sound padding on the sides of the uh, enclosure where the fan is, I mean, the fan's just open. It's like what was in your video, right? Yeah, and so is the back of the amplifier right now. I can't, I can't shut it the way I have everything. I'd have to do some modifications to it to get it, you know, where I can shut the back door. But that's coming, so it's like, <laughs> it's loud, man. Well, I, it's not going to be that loud when you get done. I mean, now this is kind of ridiculous, because this is, this is way louder than it'll ever be. Yeah, but it's, it's like rigged up right now, so that's all. All right, I have to go put dinner on, so I'll be back in a couple of minutes, but there's, who knows who's on frequency. Maybe you can pull up the nets and see, but I'll be back. And what, BCG. I don't know, I gotta go in the kitchen and figure that out. Even I'm gonna be surprised. There you go. You wouldn't want to make a pizza for me because I like everything on it. I have a pizza that's so filled up with stuff that you have to have a separate fork just to pick up all the stuff that falls off. Hey, Bob, what's going on? Yeah, it's not too bad out here either. Um, looking outside, it cleared up. I could see a little bit of sunlight, but it was it was pretty grim. And yesterday, dude, I had like 35, 40 mile an hour winds up here on the mountain. It was crazy stuff. W two B T K.
Yeah, it's super jock strapped right now, but um, it's nice. Like, it, I can actually talk on it a little bit. It's got enough airflow and stuff. So, um, a lot of fun, <laughs> you know? But, yep, super jock strapped. I see playing horn in my chat. I wish I could, uh, I wish I could play horn with this thing, but I, I'm only really allowed to just talk into it and identify my station every 10 minutes. But that's fine. So, I don't know, I'll be like, I'll be completely obsequious. W2BTK. working on this air handler stuff I had tried it and the thing didn't work right it was spinning backwards I guess the the run cap that's in there is a little wasn't any good or whatever so I replaced it with some crap I had laying around that was like not the right thing just to test it and got it working and then those caps blew up um, as expected after about 10 minutes it got super hot too but then I found like the right cap so I'm running that thing right now and it was all just like experimentation with airflow and, and stuff like that today getting the amp um, you know closer to where it needs to be and it seems to be there I mean it's uh, it's running nice got uh, got everything going I could do a little bit long, you know, I think I can actually talk now, I don't have to keep looking behind me, checking the temperature all the time, but it's way too noisy, this is noisier than it would ever be, like Clark said, right Clark? Man, he's a, come on man, it's, a, it's 4 minutes and 30 seconds. Clock, answer, the, answer the radio. KM2CG, Sayaki. Another KM2CG uh, or J. What What was that? Okay, I'll say it. Hello, Fox Pod 2, Golf Victor. Hello, Fox Pod 2, Golf Victor, Jackson, Sayaki, New York. Oh, okay, Jack. KF. 2GV, got it that time. Yeah, Bill W2BTK over here, Jersey, waving to you. And you have Bob up there in Maine. And um, Bob, how are you? How are you hearing Jack? Story and I'm not changing it. Yeah, yeah. 
they just didn't lock down there all night. And of course, I don't know if things are getting hit better. Oh boy, that's uh, that's terrible. That's terrible. All right, I, I changed radios, and I don't know if, uh, if that makes any difference. Let me just see here. Let me get the thing set up a little bit better. Hold on. This and that. There we go. How's this? How's the uh, how's the signal now? Over. Looking down here, that gives you signal strength reading, but uh, we were. Good. Yeah, no, you get great signal over here. This is W2BTK. Um, Bob, you're starting to come up a little bit too, but yeah, I mean, um, I don't, I don't have as much signal on you as as uh, some of the other guys. That's just how it is right now, but I hear you fine. I mean, the noise floor is real quiet, so it doesn't really matter if you're coming in low or noisy. As long as the noise stays down, I, I got plenty of, plenty of audio there. I can talk to you just fine. But, man, just to give you guys an idea of, like, how noisy and windy it is in here right now, the TV that's hanging on the wall that my panadapter is up on is kind of like vibrating and oscillating back and forth with the wind uh, kind of blowing at it from about 10 feet away. That's insane. <laughs> okay, so copy that. You're saying there's a lot of blowing going on in here. Oh, there's, this is the most amount of blowing that's ever gone on in here, period. Okay, we received the traffic up here all out. <laughs> Yep, yep. No, it's sad but true. Um, <laughs> it's, it's, uh, well, I don't know. Well, uh, Jesus. W2BTK. Yeah, I'm sitting here copying the mail. I'm just uh, sitting here minding my minding my own business, and hopefully you could uh, hear my uh, puny weak signal uh, uh, okay. And uh, and uh, and that's that. Yeah, I'm just, uh, just seeing what's going on here. Yep, everything seems to be uh, up and operational, lover. You're. Uh, well, that's a good thing. That's a good thing. Yeah, I'm talking on the old FT-1000 Delta uh, with a uh, uh, with the old uh, VL-1000 uh, uh, linear amplifier. That's uh, that's what we're running here, over. You're like 40 over over here. Um, really, really big signal. Well, yeah, and you're 40 over over here in Syosset. So uh, to give you a give you an idea, over. Damn. Yeah, we got. This must be the uh, the conditions tonight out here. That's crazy. 
Yeah, well, Clark loves hearing from me. I don't know where he is tonight. Into GTO. Hey, uh, there's a uh, GTO. What's going on, man? Haven't heard from you in a while. And Clark wants to go make his dinty more. But he'll be back. All right, very, very good. All right, I'm going to play, fiddle around with the pool. I'll be listening to you on my HT. So, uh, and by the way, if you want to listen um, uh, to yourself, you can come through on 446-925 uh, in New York City if you have UHF. All right, man. Sounds good. Um, Joe, what's going on? Not much. What's going on, Billy? Just sitting here listening to blower noise. <laughs> All right, then. Uh, not much. And uh, Bob's out there in Maine. Just hanging out, man. 3885. Clark said he's going to be back in a little bit. I don't know what happened to him. Yeah, that's about it, man. Yeah, I hear you. I figure I'd fire this thing up and dust it off. Hey, Bill. Yeah, what's up? Hey, Joe. It's W2JBL. Bill, I, I tried to email you, but you got no email address on QRZ. I hate to do this on the air. But, uh, man, you are taking out 85 with Sybil and some buckshot for about a week. Hmm. Yeah, I got I to gotta check that out. Ever since I took the 222 out of line, my filtering's not quite as good as it was before. Oh well, um, let me see what I can do. And I do have an email on QRZ. It's, it's like right there at the top. It's the very first thing in a blue font. I don't have it up at the top in, you know, text or whatever. It's, a, it's an image with my, with my email address. Oh, okay. Yeah, if you could roll off the high end a little bit and, like, back off on the audio. If you're using, like, the three diode ultramodulation setup, which I use in my mobile for a different reason, uh, that prevents you from overmodulating, but when you get into it, it square waves and it makes buckshot. Yeah, it might be hitting it a little bit. Yeah, so. I wanted to go up and talk to Timmy, so. <laughs> Thanks for letting me in. I hate to do this kind of Catch you later. W3 All right, Chris. Yeah, I don't know. I'm not even modulating much. I'll catch you later. I'll, let's see what I can do. Turn some things down. Go, go ahead, Perry. I put a blower on this thing so that, you know, I can actually talk on it, but looks like, I don't know, I have a pretty, pretty good filter. Uh, there is a little bit of stuff spilling over. It's not that far down. You know what it is? It's this, this damn blower. <laughs> it's so, it's almost 100 decibels in here. Gave my high is a little more of a cut. Maybe that'll help a little bit. Yeah, it seems like it's doing a little something. I don't know. Might just be a little heavy, I don't know. Oh, I could retap the three diode, I guess. Let me try that. That's for sure. I don't know who 
else is in here? Good evening. I know Clark. I heard Clark when I got home at like 5.45 and Bill down in Dover. Uh, but just trying to get myself motivated here. It's been a long day. Long day. Got bad news this morning. It's been kind of a crappy day. So trying to get up and going. Uh, so good evening. I'm going to stand by W3MMR. isn't a very good filter. Oh well. I'm only giving it like 40, 50 percent modulation. So who knows? W2 BTK. Yeah, hold on, Bill. It's, uh, the other Bill's talking. Hold on. Yeah, real good, uh, Bill. Uh, you're a little light uh, coming in here this afternoon. Uh, a little lighter than normal. Uh, the audio sounds okay from what I can hear, but like I said, you're real light, so I definitely am not the one to be giving a critical audio report at the moment, so. But it's, uh, it's good to hear you back on the air. It's been a while, a little while there, Bill. And like I said, let me get, uh, settled in here. And, um, actually, we're up on 75 if you want to come up there. I just... I was noticed, noticed I was on 74 to come down. You're, I think you're on like 73-ish. Uh, but sounding good, Bill, from what I can hear. And uh, maybe the band will improve a little bit. But like I said, I'm going to get settled in, get me a drink, and uh, we'll be listening out for a little bit. W3 MMR. Good evening, good evening. And Billy, it sounds... Uh, I didn't hear any change, if you made any change. What's up, Perry? M2 GTO. Yo, what's up, dog? What's up, my man? How are you? I'm just chilling, man. Just uh, waiting for some of these storms to blow out. Yeah, I, actually, the band's kind of quiet. I don't even really know what's going on as far as the uh, on the storm front, but um. Guess we can check and see. Ooh, what's going on here? Oh yeah, wow. Guess there were some storms over uh over in your neck of the woods, huh? I didn't even know that. Yeah, it's on and off all day, little ones popping up. It's rain like hell for like five minutes and then the sun comes out and you know, an hour later, you know. Take two. Yeah, I hear you. Well, you're sounding great over this way, Joe. You got a great signal. Um, you can check it out on the live feed. I think I got the live feed going. Yeah, I'm streaming on uh, Facebook there and YouTube. But uh, good to hear you, man. Yeah, we'll be back in a bit. Like I said, I'm just getting settled in. Been a long day. And uh, let me go get a drink. Um, go... Uh, Go uh, take my relaxation medicine. <coughs> uh, wink, wink, cough, cough. <laughs> and uh, we'll be back in a few. NTGTO, W3MMR. All right, Perry. So I'm going to bounce around a little bit. I got a t uh, but She's not scooping the way she should be, but uh, we'll uh, mess around with it. I'll probably catch in here in a little bit. So W3MMR, this is NTGTO down the shore. We'll be back. 
All right, man, good hearing you. Great signal. Audio sounds fantastic. We'll see you. W3MMR. Now you're on 73. <laughs> Where are we going? Are we on 75 or 73? Were you here when Chris came and said that uh, we were, I was splashing up to 85? Ah, uh, that must have been right after I, uh, uh, right before I came on. No, I didn't hear that. Okay. Now I'm on 73. But I'm going to get that drink and that I've been talking about. I'll be right back. Okay. And, Bob, what were you saying uh, before? Oh, I was just saying, could you be able to stand? Oh, man, you're doing that. But your signal came way up. What did you say? Oh yeah, I could just unplug it from the wall, um, easy, but I don't know, I'm just running it, it's, it is what it is, I mean, there's fan, it's nice though, because I can old buzzard now. Okay, no, I mean, I mean, I'm fine, I just, just throwing that out there. Well, Eric, you got it Yeah, it doesn't really matter. Um, in general, like weak signals, you're probably not coming in well on parries, but I hear you fine on this one. There's just a lower noise floor. It's nice. Um, wow, man. It's like night and day difference. If I just sit here like this and pee up for a while, it'd be getting real hot. Not so much now. Don't have to worry about it. Nice. And everyone gets to to hear it. The wind. That there's so much wind in this room right now. something up. I, I should go down a little further, maybe. Bob, you don't have an SDR, right, Bob? You got, like, a vintage receiver? Oh, no, we're hybrid here. Viking 2 with SDR. You got a sharp cutoff at 3880. Am I... Is there any other, like, box shot or anything off my signal? Like, or it's, it's pretty good. I'm... I'm transmitting a little just past 3880. And that's where it's dropping off at, is a little past 3880. And I went, I put 20 dB of attenuation in line, same thing. Put zero, took 20 dB out and had no attenuation, still the same thing. So, I'd say you're okay. Alright, well I could move like, just a cunt hair farther and it might be a little better. But I was just wondering if it was like clean, because there is a little spillover on this filter, but it's not too bad. And the 222 after it used to catch like everything. It was insane. But I had to take that out of line. Or are you getting RF in it? Yeah, I don't know. Um, no, that's a fair request, you know, because I do run pretty wide, 7.2, so I'll bump it down a little bit. 
give them five PC of audio bandwidth before they have to listen to my S's and T's and crap. Um. No, the the 222 was again like RF. It just it was like humming and doing crappy stuff, and all the switches were like intermittent, and it just had a lot of problems. And it's in a repair parts pile now, so I'll have to go through it and and really spend time on it someday. Perry must be what, Bob? Hey, man. A and W root beer is where where it's at. No way, man. No A and W root beer for me. It's all about Stewart's. How's everybody doing? KD two AFV. I agree. Stewart's is probably the best. What's going on, man? Hey, what kind of uh, signal strength you got on me tonight? Uh, let's see. I really wasn't paying attention, Billy. Hit it up one more time. Eerie. Uh, good 30. You, uh, it's fading between a 30 and a 40. That's over. Hell yeah. Now I, now I can match the signal that you do here. Nice. That's nice. I see now, uh, I, you know what? I'm going to have to uh, turn a fan on or something. i got to join the, uh, the, background, the background fan club. Uh, Perry's got that, you know, the whoa, 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 down there. And Billy, it sounds like you're in a wind tunnel. Not really. It's not that bad. You can just barely hear it. <laughs> but, yeah, now, uh, now i gotta, I got to go rig up a fan because I need to be in the fan club now. <laughs> Oh boy, it's nice getting on the air. No, no noise up here today. I'm rambling about stuff that I don't care about. Guess I'll. Uh, seems like Billy's channel master right now. I'll turn it back over to you. I'm not channel master, but I do like that the fan club. You want to be in the fan club? Just get yourself a loud ass blower. Stick it right behind you. I got one you could borrow, Toby. It's loud as hell. Like, it, it would probably drive you nuts. Uh, but you could be in the fan club. Yeah, I've, uh... Fan club, come on. I gotta improve the cooling on this thing, man. I gotta put a bigger blower on it. And run some... Run some, uh... Some... Intake ducting or something. I gotta... I've gotta do something about it. So I like to make old buzzards in the morning. They go at night here. It's fine. It's not a big deal. But um, you know, anything over two minutes, uh, things start to get really warm. Perry, you got to look into um, like uh, it's kind of like a dryer vent booster fan and some flexible insulated ducting. Wait, what is it called? What are you talking about? Like. Those fans that guys like put on the top of their boxes, like on the exhaust, to suck it out, and the insulated stuff, like that. Is that what you're talking about? Uh, yeah, a little bit. Uh, the insulated ducting. I'm sure you've seen that. The flexible insulated stuff. Only insulated just because it will, you know, that'll drown out any, you know, block any fan noise. But uh, in uh, some commercial buildings, you'll see uh, the heck, I. They're not always called dry or booster fans, but they have, you know, it's basically it's an inline fan. You can put it, you know, somewhere within the ducting, and it'll help yank all the heat out for you. That's a good idea, Perry. You could get, like, 120 millimeter computer fan and just put it over the opening there and then duct it on out, push it out. Yeah, I actually have a real... I have a, a, like a 120 CFM uh, fan here that I put on the intake of my AL80B. Like, 
when I would make an old buzzard and I would unkey, I'd flip it on to key, to cool it down real fast. And it would cool it down. It would drop like the temperature 100 degrees in a matter of like a minute and 30 seconds. It was it was crazy. Yeah, I guess I could do that. I could put it on the exhaust and then like induct it right out of it. That would be cool. That's the only thing I don't like about this amplifier is the cooling setup. The RF deck is pressurized, but it's not a blower. It's two big ass muffin fans on the back of the amplifier that are like high CFM, uh, but they blow directly onto the tube, pressurize the cab, and then there's like six holes around the tube to pressurize the underneath, the air goes underneath, and then it's all forced out through the fins of the tube, and there's a chimney on top of the tube and, you know, out the exhaust. Um, so, like, I don't even know how I could improve on, you know, in the cooling unless I get, you know, a, you know, if I, unless I'm putting, moving more air through there, you know what I'm saying? Speaking of computer fans, Toby, you saw my post, right? Or my comment? <laughs> yeah, man. Yeah, I did. Uh, yeah, I commented on that. i just, uh, yeah, you'd probably be okay running Minecraft with that setup. Hell, I'm running on a laptop down at my house. <laughs> And you know this computer up here, and I mean the 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 stinking uh, the server that I built, I built it out of an old Bitcoin mining board. I just happened to have laying around. I checked the processor, and you know it's 2.7 gigahertz, which is not all that great. But you know, the Minecraft server, that thing only it no it's only a single threaded thing. It can't make use of multiple threads. So having a processor that can do 2.7 that would you know you don't need a hell of a lot of memory like two gigs is good enough for like up to five people and yeah i threw a mine os on there it's a turnkey linux distro and you basically it it, it turns it into a headless thing so you just throw it on a hard drive load it up it starts up for you and you go through a you know a web interface on you know any other computer and configure the server and, and it's a just set it and forget it thing it's a, the basically it's a almost like a variation of some of the uh, mining software I used to use that worked real good. It's really really stable because it you know it's that whole security through obscurity thing. It's a Linux Linux distro. Not too many people can uh, get into them too easily, and if they can, it's not connected to anything else in my network. So it's a little bit isolated, but it works good for what it is. KD2 AFV because. I think it's about that time for me. I'm not sure. This thing has a QSO timer on it, but I don't ever turn it on. Yeah, W2BTK. Dude, that's funny as hell. Um, you got, like, old GPUs laying around, I guess. Is that what they use for mining, like, graphics cards and stuff? I've been, like, looking at all that crap for the past month, like, researching it and this and that, and I got a way more badass graphics card it was a an AMD card, but um, I, I sent it back and got a, an NVIDIA one because they have, their new cards have this NVENC encoder chip in them. So like, you could basically encode your Twitch stream at like medium X64, X264 settings or whatever, which is like really taxing on the CPU, but it just offloads it to that. And like, doesn't touch your CPU. So you can like do a stream and uh, have your full CPU there, and your you you know the rest of your graphics card if you wanted to run a game or something. But I just got that thing so I can video edit without wanting to you know like punch holes in my screen all the time because my computer lags and runs like crap. Everything I have here is like 10 years old pretty much. Um, <laughs> it's rough. W2BTK. Yeah, I'm using the uh, my graphics card as the encoder, like using the hardware, um, and it definitely really it definitely took a lot of the CPU usage. Uh, it really brought it down, like it brought it down like 35 percent, 40 percent. What type of GPU is it? It's an NVIDIA GTX 1050 Ti. Yeah, the 10 series 
had that was those were the first ones with the N bank, and then the 20 series they have like I don't know I guess a better N bank. Yeah, and then they're also like a thousand dollars. They're super nice GPUs though. If I can find one used, um, like if I ever build an, another PC, I, I you know I would. That's probably like an RTX. What is it? RTX 20, 2050 or something like that. The twenty sixty. No way, man. Um, but it, it's like an aftermarket RTX 2060 Super, and those are those are nowhere near a thousand dollars, man. The, you're thinking of like the the top top end. What'd you say, Toby? Sorry, Bob. Are you bored as hell? All right, see you, Bob. Go ahead, Toby. See you, Bob. Uh, yeah, Perry. I was saying, uh, the uh, you want to go super high end, get the uh, the RTX 2080 Ti. That's like uh, last time I looked, they're like twelve hundred dollars for that thing. It's like good, good God, why would you spend that much? I mean, I'm running what I'm running here. I'm still running a 4790K, and it keeps up with everything so far. I mean, I'm not running at 4K or anything like that. You know. It's just uh, the 1440p, which, uh, what is that? It's 2K. But it's that and an old Titan X graphics card, you know, way outdated technology compared to what they have now, you know. The, the, the 1050 will keep up with the old Titan, and the Titan used to be, you know, the Titan used to be the top of the line for consumer graphics cards. And I think when they when they were brand new, I think they were like, six seven hundred dollars or something like that and you know you got a 1050 that'll hang right with it and beat it in a lot of games so it just kind of shows how far things have come in just a few years yeah i uh i do every this thing this computer does everything i needed to do I, it's, mine's a 4770 but it's not the k so i can't over overclock it um but I mean, it's fast enough for I when you know what I needed to do. Um, hold on a second here. God damn it! What am I doing? Um, let me see. Yeah, it usually runs like 3.4, like 3.5 gig is usually what it runs at. It's got you know it'll boost. The base speed is 3.4 gig, but it'll go up to like 3.7, 3, 3.8. Um. Yeah, it's uh, the 4770 non K and the, the, the 1050 Ti uh, graphics card, 16 gigs of RAM, two, 256 um, a gig solid, uh, Samsung solid state drive. Um, you know, I got an Ethernet card in there and uh, running a 124 inch 1080p monitor, and then my main monitor is a 27 inch 1440p, a 2K monitor. And I'm so glad I got this monitor, <laughs> you know, because I had two 1080s before, and I moved the other 1080 to the other station where I got some other cheap, you know, eight-year-old, you know, base model desktop, like a home desktop. Um, but I got Windows 10 Pro on here, and this thing works great, dude. For streaming, running the SDR stuff, I can browse, I can do everything. And like right now, I'm, I'm running 35% as I'm transmitting. And I got a browser open. I'm streaming. I have uh, actually Adobe Lightroom open because I was editing a photo. Like, yeah, it does. It does. You know, it does everything I need. Really, just buying a computer like would be kind of a waste of a waste of money at this point. Yeah. See, all um, all my stuff is all this hair, and both these machines are are huffing and puffing right now. And if I do that a lot, they I mean, they're just gonna die quick. So. I haven't gotten a new computer in almost 10 years, so it's about time, you know. So I'm building one. I'm waiting for all this stuff to come. And uh, the, the GPU I went with originally was a Radeon, Radeon like AMD one, 5700. And it was like, a, you know, a pretty good aftermarket of that. And it, it kicked the, the, the one I got, it kind of like outdid it. But they don't have any good support for stream encoding and stuff like the, theirs looks like crap and they're not like working with OBS 
and doing what they need to do like NVIDIA has done. So I went with like a little bit lesser performance graphic card in like games, which I really don't do a lot, just to get that uh, really good NVENC encoder. And it, that that's basically it. But I, you know, it, it was kind of hard to send the other one back. But you know, you gotta do what you gotta do. I'm gonna be using this for video editing and streaming and maybe some games, you know, like, but that's definitely not a top priority and I'm not gonna be streaming any games, so. I don't know, I just want the computer to be good for like three or four or five years, you know. That's all, W2BTK on Montana Mountain in New Jersey. <laughs> what CPU did you go with, AB3AL? Hey, what's up, man? I got the Ryzen 7 3700X. Cool, cool. That's, uh, what, 16 core? Nah, 8 core, 16 thread. Nah, that's what I meant. Yeah, you'd be fine with that. Um, for for the price you paid for that, you've actually got to spend about $1,500 with Intel to, to touch it for video transcoding. That's pretty much what I saw. And you got Toby and Perry out there, too. Hey, Perry. And, uh, Perry, you just described the five computers I have sitting in a basement to a T. Except they're, uh, uh, 1070 graphics cards. I pulled them out of a, uh, pulled them out of a business when I upgraded them. They tossed them. Yeah, this computer does all I need. I actually got this thing. It didn't have the solid state drive. It didn't have the the graphics card. It was just a Dell XPS 8700. I got off Craigslist with a monitor, with a nice. There was a 21 inch Dell monitor. Actually, pretty expensive than Dell monitors. Um, that a keyboard and like a wired mouse. I think I paid 300 bucks for it. Off well, a guy who put like had a little computer shop here local, and uh, sold a bunch of stuff on Craigslist and got it off of him probably two years ago and. You know, I updated the the graphics card probably a year ago now, and then the solid state drive shortly after. Um, and it handles, like I said, it handles everything I could throw at it. I could run, you know, Power SDR Thetis at 144 frames per second um, without a problem. I can't see any difference between 120 and 144, but I could see a difference between like 80 and 120. <laughs> you know. Uh, so that it helped out with that the CPU usage went down, you know with the with the new graphics card and <clears throat> um, It's kind of overkill honestly, but um, <clears throat> I wasn't expecting it at the time to be doing streaming and stuff like that So it's really helped with that and but I'll tell you one thing when I go to produce a video like an x64 format um, like a, a YouTube video that's like an hour long dude while I was producing the video my CPU was maxed a hundred percent for like an hour and however long it takes to produce, you know, the, the you know, the, the video or whatever. Uh, so <clears throat> I will say that much. That producing videos, I mean, and it it taxes the CPU, man, a hundred percent pegged. Heck yeah, dude. And I usually want to punch my monitor because it freezes or quits or corrupts or does whatever because it just craps the bed and gets like you know crazy hot. I don't have a damn board to put it in though. I, I know what it's worth. Um, and one of my uh, one of my server manufacturers is trying to get me to move over the servers that I'm buying from them uh, over from Intel to, uh, to AMD. Why they didn't send me an Epic check out the chip, I don't know. But they're they're sending uh, they're actually building desktop. Uh, they're actually building servers with these uh, desktop processors. I mean, it's frickin' 64 cores, 128 threads. Um, <laughs> I started looking for a motherboard for the damn thing. And uh, there's like two motherboards on the market that will actually handle it because of the power oh, control that it has. You need a thousand watt power supply minimum for it. It's, it's ridiculous. One of these days, I'll uh, I'll put it together and and uh, I'll use it for my uh, DaVinci Resolve machine. But it, it's just, I mean, I got a laptop. I do everything on. It's uh, an Intel 98, 98, I think. 
whatever with the RTX 2070 in it. Um, and for the little bit of video I do, it, it handles everything I need. Yeah, that's awesome. I mean, <clears throat> like, the, it's so hard to keep up with the latest and greatest, you know, with PCs. And, I mean, as you know, you do it for a living. So, um, this thing, you know, works good for me for now. But I'm sure, like, I'll get a wild hair up my butt probably within the next year and be like, oh, I'll just let me get a new computer. <laughs> you know, it'll, it'll, be, it'll be this drastic change. I want to see the CPU usage lower. <laughs> and that'll be my excuse. Yeah, let's have some nice at that. No, I've got an order coming up for, uh, I think about 10, 10 machines with uh, quad GPUs in it, using the 3990 for a render farm for a, um, uh, advertising company or a video production company that does uh, advertisements, uh, some are national, some are local, and they use Linux, and definitely going with AMD for Linux, it's just uh, <laughs> the problem with Windows right now is the, uh, the the big 64 core AMD chips. Windows can't even use it. Um, it and when it tries, it, uh, it it falls on its face, face and seg faults and blue screens and everything else. So, but yeah, it's going to be a fun project. It'll be like hundred fifty thousand dollars worth of hardware. In uh, in a couple of boxes. Who else is in here? AB3 AL. Oh, I'm still in here. KD2 AFB. I actually fired up Minecraft. I'm playing it right now. Because I am a glutton for punishment and I'm trying to actually do two things at once game and talk on the radio. I don't know how well that's going to go. Man, you're making me jealous. I'm, I should be getting all my crap in the mail, like, next week, like, late next week. And then I'll be building this thing. I don't have any good monitors, though. Uh, that was something I cut from the budget for now, because I have, I have stuff. Yeah, I'll make a recommendation for you. Uh, you're, you're normally a Mac guy, is that correct? Yeah, I've always had, like, good Macs. Okay. Go, uh, just do a Google search for DaVinci Resolve. Um, it is free. You can buy the paid version. It, paid version is 400 bucks, Or actually 300 bucks, And it is a lifetime license. Every upgrade is free. Um, they do GPU rendering where Premiere and the other packages, they only use the CPU for the final export for rendering it. Um, and it is, it is the most powerful program you can get for color grading, color correction. The, the editing features at first sucked, but now they've caught up. Uh, and they've caught up in a, in a big way. Um, it is, it, there, there's video after video of people ditching Premiere, and I, I've, I've got a, a full Adobe Suite license. Um, one of my clients actually pays for it for me, uh, so I can work on a few of their projects, but it's trash compared to DaVinci. Yeah. Well, I'll be able to run stuff like that, um, you know, soon enough. And gosh dang, man, like, my my grid meter is barely moving. Barely, barely, barely. It just bumps forward a little bit when I modulate. That's cool. Huh. Hope I don't have any RF in there. But, yeah, I don't know. The Macs were, were pretty good for a while doing audio stuff. And that's why I always had them, because, you know, I was doing Pro Tools and Logic and 48 channels of digital audio at once with, like, native plugins running. And, and that was my thing. But now I've shifted gears. So, you know, I'll check out DaVinci Resolve. I'm just getting my feet wet with video stuff. But 
I have a lot of good ideas for making like YouTube videos and stuff like that. And you know, I do pretty cool stuff over here. W2B TK. AV3AL. Yeah, I do all of my audio stuff in Linux because uh, Linux has, uh, where Mac has core audio, where you can link multiple sound cards and route it any way you want. And, and Linux has jack audio. And in my mess around, dork around studio, I don't use many VST plugins, and yes, you can run Windows VST plugins on Linux very easily. Um, most of the stuff I have is, uh, I mean, I've got 1176 compressors. I've got, I actually have a pull tech. Yeah, I've got a couple of racks of equipment I've been collecting over the years. Stuff I've pulled off job sites, um, fixed and brought home, and and you know, I route everything ascend and return out to the out to the rack equipment. Um, I don't use many plugins, but. Uh, yeah, I do everything with Linux. It's it's uh, and and the latency that you can get out of the sound cards just absolutely blows the doors off of uh, off of Windows. Yeah, I just uh, I went with Mac because that's what was in all the studios I was working in, all the studios at school, so I could just you know run it on my Mac at home, bring it to the Mac in the studio, but. None of none of those machines used Core Audio as the driver. They all had the Pro Tools TDM setups with the you know the PCI cards doing like everything DSP all that, and it would show you like you you had like the three cards set up. You'd have like two cards at 100% and like one running you know 75%. You know you had like tons of plugins open, but then you could spill it over and use native processing. But that's how they did all that crap in, like, the studios anyway. That I I was hanging out in around, well, 2008, 2009. So that was a few years ago by now. I'm sure they were, like, on to something else. I don't know what. I think Pro Tools isn't even, like, Pro Tools now. It's, like, Avid or something. Who knows? W2BTK. No, it's still Pro Tools. They still make those cards. Um, most people, a lot of people are switching away from the full-on Pro Tools rig because what Pro, Pro Tools did about seven, eight years ago is they uh, they opened themselves up to other interfaces. Um, and now, God, what Universal Audio, everybody's using their interfaces because they've got DSP chips. Um, some of them quads, some of them eight, um, on a, on a Firewire outboard audio interface. And, uh, you're, it's, uh, there's a lot of companies now making their, uh, their, uh, plugins to run on those outboard processors, so you're not even touching the, uh, the CPU. I just did a, a studio, a guy that bought uh, music scores uh, for movies, and for that, the big program is Vienna Ensemble, and um, we, and, and basically you network a bunch of servers together for the horsepower. Um, he actually has a rack of about 10 32-core Dell servers each with uh, 256 gig of RAM uh, that uh, they're all, those are all running Windows and uh, the, uh, they, they host the plugins for the, uh, the Symphony plugins and then uh, it's, it's uh, controlled by another PC and then routed over to his Mac for recording. Yeah. See, I got out of it and, um, way back then. I, I don't even know, but that sounds cool. That's what I figured they'd make. Actually, no, you know what? I had stuff like that. I had a Focusrite, you know, outboard DSP over Firewire. It was called, like, a liquid mix or something. I still have that thing. 
And I'm sure that crap is way better now. Anyway, Toby, are you still out there? Yeah, man, I'm still here. I'm just working on building my house in the game right now. <laughs> right, right, yeah. Um, damn. Yeah, I can't wait to play Minecraft, man. But I could, seriously, I could talk about that digital audio stuff for hours. That's what I, you know, I was at Berkeley. My major was music synthesis. But they changed it at, like, the very end right after, um, right, right before I graduated to electronic, um, music, uh, electronic music production and design. Gay. I like the first name better. It sounds so much cooler. Oh, you'd love to go through my barn. You guys continue on. I, just, I find this super interesting. I've got Odysseys. I've got ARPs. I've got Moogs. <laughs> You'd love to go through my barn. Oh, that's so cool. They had an ARP set up in one of the labs at Berkeley, and, like, everyone was afraid to use it. I used it a couple times. Like, you could go in the lab for lab time and sign up and be like, yo, I want to I wanna jump on the ARP. And you could only use it with, like, headphones, but it was still cool. You'd sit there and patch stuff around. And, yeah, you got to kind of know... AM synthesis to like screw with that and that's what they taught us at very very first just like doing like AM stuff with, with synthesizers and then we got into FM and more complex waveforms and stuff but man those were the days yeah, my favorite piece of gear from that time period that you're talking about uh, when you were in school was the uh, Waldorf Microwave XT we didn't have one of those, but that, yeah, not a lot of vintage stuff there. Just the ARP, and I think there was a Moog you could, or a Moog or whatever, you could rent out. But it was one of those newer, like um, the one of the newer ones. And I've got two Hammond B3s and matching Leslies too. <laughs> we we ran out a lot of backline stuff. Oh, that's cool, man. Yeah. Got all the backline. Those Hammonds, I mean, yeah, people want those all the time. They gotta have them. Can't use a synthesizer. Yeah, I've got one full upright and one that I converted to a, uh, a portable. Yeah, that's badass stuff. Nice, war like, use the Leslie. It's so... Nothing sounds like that. It's... Nice and warm and ooey gooey. And then you record it and process it with DSP. We've got, I'm looking through my inventory sheet. We've got four roads, two clavs, um, we had a Mellotron, but that thing was high maintenance. I got rid of that. Yeah, you know, that's all tape, right? Yeah, and it was exposed tape. Basically, uh, just tape stretched between two springs, and uh, and the heads rode up and down. It had a head for every piece of tape. For every key, there was a piece of tape, and there was a head. Yeah, if you're not just going to have it in a collection, yeah, it would sell that, too. It's a pain. Well, when we rented that thing out, we charged high dollars. Because, uh, you know, if, if the Beatles cover band had a big show, they wanted it. I mean, they wanted it big time. Because damn near everything the Beatles did was, was I think the entire Andy album was that. Um, and they wanted it so bad, and they would pay through the nose for it. Well, yeah, I mean, how many people do you think there are you can call up and get a, a working Mellotron? But, yeah, the maintenance on that, I, I, you would have to send it out for a bajillion dollars, you know? I'm sure you spent hours on that thing all the time before it went out and when it came back. 
But that's it's so cool anyway. I mean, yeah, they, the Beatles had a sampler way back then, you know. But cue, cue the air horn sound. Burr, burr, burr. And uh, the, uh, the Mellotron was actually, it, it was a pain of butt to work on, but it was not very sophisticated. Um, my business partner is one of about three remaining um, Hammond's restoration experts, and um, those are the real nightmare to work on. Yeah, I've never really worked on any of that stuff. Just use a good amount of it, listen to a lot of it, which is, you know, that's very pleasurable anyway. Yeah, backline is cool. I've, I I was friends with a couple guys who worked at, like, um, what was it? There was SIR, you know, the you-know-what in red boxes in New York, and then there was one in Hoboken called... Um, Supersonic Transport, SST. And I knew a guy who worked there. Man, they had everything, too. That place was sweet. Um, kind of a... Or it was it was in, like... A, and I was, like, Weehawken, I think. It's a pain to get to off that helix, like, that goes down in the Lincoln Tunnel, 495, or whatever the hell that thing is. You get off at that last exit. You know what I'm talking about. But, man, it was cool. I, I, I go hang out there... We pull stuff out, jam, some really good times. W2BTK. Yeah, our stuff's mainly PA and and antique organs and stuff like that. Um, if you're doing a, an outdoor festival of, of say, maybe 10,000 people, we, we've got the line arrays that can handle that. And, um sound system that can handle something like that. We've we've started getting into uh, jumbotron screens. They've gotten cheap enough to where it's uh, it's it's actually worthwhile. And 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 different touring bands will will rent them or different festivals. But it's fun. It's uh, you know we hire crew Mexicans to set it up and. When they're done, they tear it down and park it back in the barn. I need another beer, AB3AL. Hey, real quick, did you ever, like, run across a guy named Pat? Perfectly clear audio, PCA, out of North Bergen? No. All right. I'll see you in a minute. This is W2BTK, and I don't expect a lot of people to be hanging out after all that, but I know Toby and Perry were out there. So, uh, hopefully you found that interesting, because I know you haven't been transmitting much. W2BTK. No way. <laughs> that stuff's, uh, I love hearing that. Super fascinating to me. <laughs> Not even sarcastic at all. All that old audio stuff, I find that stuff real interesting. Like, uh, especially the type of things like bands used to do, you know, way back when, before we had all, you know, all the technology we have now. Like, the all, like, the tricks and things they had to do to, you know, get the sound that they wanted. That stuff is, that's cool, cool stuff. KD2 AFV. Yeah. And all that back line is one thing, but then, yeah, he's got PA gear. That's the guy who I worked for had, you know, where, that warehouse in North Bergen, I swear, probably like one to two million dollars of PA stuff that he collected over the course of 30-something years. We had the A system, the B system, the C system, the theater systems, this, that you know, A cabling, A snakes, patch bays, like all for all the different systems. And it was, it was awesome, man. I worked there when I was in college and like right after I got out and man, I learned everything. Everything I needed to know about how to like set up a public address system and make it really clean and really loud is that that guy knew his stuff, man. 
and he made sure that I learned everything correctly. So I'm really grateful for that. W2BTK, it was all reinforced in college. Come back. <clears throat> Got a lot of guitar amps too. I play guitar. That's that's my instrument. And uh, if you ever look on Craigslist in the musical instrument section, and there's there's ads that say I I buy broken guitar amps. Um, that's pretty much me. Um, they can be had dime a dozen, and uh, you know tube amps are so easy to fix, especially the older. The older uh, messy boogies and Marshalls and stuff. The newer stuff, the uh, the Marshalls, the uh, the boards, the circuit boards became conductive and parts just started shorting out everywhere. Um, the older stuff, people have a get an estimate from the shop. Oh yeah, it's six hundred dollars to fix it, and they put it on. You know, they see my ad. Yeah, I give me two hundred bucks for it. slipped off the pedal Facebook marketplace I haven't I don't hang out there I haven't seen the ads but I watch a lot of those guys on YouTube who repair all those like amps and stuff that's pretty interesting just started like checking a lot of that out I've never worked on any I I play the drums I don't have much in the way of guitar amplifiers but I'm into that stuff have you ever uh, used one of those Mutron biphase pedals like um, Billy Corgan, Siamese Dream Smashing Pumpkins album? Uh, I think he like used that a lot on that album. Those things are pretty sick and pretty rare. I wonder if you ever came across one. No, no. I don't really stay away from the pedals and stuff because you know, when you get a musician that's touring and, um, you know, they're doing a, a little bit bigger venue than they're, they're normally set up for it, they've got all of the, the low-level stuff they need. That's their sound. Um, you know, we're just, we're just renting the balls to them. Yeah, I hear you. No, that's cool anyway. I don't know. I figured I'd ask. My buddy had one. And it was in college, like, before I was into, like, electronics or anything. So, like, it it was broken, and he didn't know how to fix it. And he didn't, like, trust anyone. Like, he didn't want to send it somewhere to have it repaired because, like, he didn't think he'd ever get it back. And I always wonder about that thing. It, it was so cool. I don't know. But anyway. Yeah. This is nice, nice conversation here. But... Uh, Wish we could be like a little more, we should be more inclusive. The biggest problem with those old pedals from the 60s and 70s is they used germanium diodes and transistors. And uh, that's pretty much unobtainium right now. And you can cross reference it and, and, and put a workable part in there, but it. You know, I, for the longest time, I would argue with musicians, yeah, it doesn't change the sound. And then I really started listening, and oh yeah, it changes the sound. Yeah, it's always a, like, I find, like, old schematics for stuff, like, you know, you want to build, like, a field strength meter, or, like, some weird, you know, what little RF projects and stuff, and they always want you to use one of them germanium diodes. I, I have a few of them over here, but they're, they're like, hard to find. It's true, even... I don't know. Whatever. And the thing is, is they were sloppy and leaky, and that's what gives musical equipment, especially uh, guitar pedals, that's what gives them their sound. That's so funny. Well, yeah, it, distortion pedals, you know. Yeah, it's usually usually some kind of clipping circuit, like uh, the original Ibanez Tube Screamer. Um, if you find one, the original first or second run in working condition, just for that little green pedal that adds a little bit of boost, uh, a little bit of mid-boost and a little bit of gain, not even distortion, 
Um, You're talking like twelve, fifteen hundred dollars for that stupid pedal. Yeah, that stuff is all crazy expensive. And like, you know, studio equipment, like compressors, EQs, and crap like that, they want a, a bajillion dollars for all that stuff, too. I don't know what it is. I think they make a lot of money on it, to tell you the truth. Like, the, the market's just jacked up. But they are coming out with a lot of, like, cheaper, low-end stuff that's really good, too. But there's always going to be some kind of market for those, like, Oh, I've got like an extra, you know, $3,500 laying around. Let me buy a, a two-channel EQ, you know, like two VQ or something goofy like that. Just for, you know, to have laying around in case somebody wants to use it for, for coloration or something. Because that's probably like, you know, it's not a super accurate, like, surgical EQ. It's like a, a tone control kind of deal for like, you know, 3500 bucks or whatever. <laughs> Must be nice. That's crazy, but that's why I never really built a studio back then. And back when I was doing it, it was like the low budget home studio thing was still kind of like a joke. Like you could do demos, but you couldn't really do anything like you can now. With, you know, uh, that budget of that one EQ, you could do like a really, really nice home recording setup these days. Anyway, WTBTK. Wife's calling. AB3AL. Somebody else pick it up. Well, I guess I will. <laughs> I just blew myself up. Had to respawn. I was making coffee and cleaning the kitchen. Toby, you watch the, like, Minecraft videos on YouTube at all? Yeah, I check them out once in a while. I, uh, end up going down, like, a YouTube black hole, though. I'll, you know, I'll start up, I'll watch, like, one or two videos, and then I just kind of keep going and going and going and going and kind of lose track of time, and before I know it, it's, like, you know, 3 a.m. I know what you mean. But I was going to say, you got to watch these. I forget what the kid's channel is. He's like some goofy sounding like English kid. Like, oh, blah, 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 blah. But he, he makes the funniest videos. But he, he goes on Twitch and finds people streaming that are hacking on servers. And then, like, he's buddies with all these people. And he'll get, like, admin on the server and go and just troll the crap out of them. And just make them, like, rage, basically. Um, super entertaining. <laughs> Oh, that's good stuff. Uh, now I'm going to have to find that. That's funny. <laughs> Hold on, I'll look it up. You got to... You... So, uh, I don't know what that noise is, but uh, just... <laughs> Catch you later, wb 2 em And 2VJ, this is W2JBL. You're going to Toby. What, you, you can't hear Toby? No, no way you can't hear Toby. I can hear you, Bob. Well, hold on, man. Well, somebody can't hear me out there? Huh. That's interesting. Huh? Now I hear you. No, oh, I just walked in the room and Billy said something and it was a long call. Now I hear you. Oh, well, there we go. Uh, uh, N1XBM, right? Yep, November 1 x ray Bravo mic. So, does anyone know what the origin is of this DRM or whatever the hell this is? It's in the AM window of Nightbreed? I don't know, but this one on 3870 just started. W3MMR. It hasn't been here for long. There was one up on 3890 that's been there for some time, but I don't remember this one ever being here. Yeah, but you want to know what? Every time you guys key up, it's it's gone. Like, I don't hear it at all. It's only audible between keys here. So you're all... The signal you guys are all giving me is, is well above that. Um, 
Bob, it's 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 in with you a little bit. You have a little bit weaker than the other guys, but uh, still like well over, not bothering me at all. So I wasn't even going to acknowledge it. And Toby, I, I just looked this kid up, and his YouTube t channel is Shotgun Raids, all one word. I think he only uploads like once a month, like maybe, because he spends a lot of time on the videos, but it. It's worth watching if you like Minecraft shotgun raids. Oh, I'm going to have to check that out now. <laughs> that sounds like a lot of fun. <laughs> Dude, these kids, they, they like rage out. He gets them like banned from the servers and then like sometimes from Twitch because I guess you can't hack and just like they flip the hell out. Like, do like, ah! like throwing stuff and this and that and the kid like he's just going about it like logically like nope like you're hacking here look I can prove it blah 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 like this is that <laughs> you know <laughs> like oh my god oh that's good stuff yeah <laughs> I'm gonna have to check that out I'm like lost right now I ventured too far away from my home base and uh didn't leave a bread crumb, crumb trail, so now I gotta try and figure out my way back home. I've uh, I've never played like Minecraft or World of Warcraft or like any of those any of those games. I don't know anything about them. I just know it's like I've heard some things, and it's pretty amazing. And I know that I would probably be super addicted. I don't even have a video game console anymore, or any games on this PC. Oh, excuse me, I was playing Undertale. My son had Undertale on my computer, and I was playing that for a while. I don't know anything about games either, Perry, but I've been playing Minecraft since it basically, since it came out. I mean, with lapses here and there, like, there, there would be a couple years when I didn't play, but it's always been on my computer. I remember, like, the early, early, early versions of that game, when, like, all that extra crap didn't exist. You got, like, a crafting bench, and you could make a few things, and, like, that was it. There was no survival, or, um, there was no creative mode, nothing. You just, like, just go. Oh, Billy, have you <clears throat> have you checked it out lately? Like all the updates they got to it, you can even you know, like dual wield stuff. You can keep a torch in your left hand with your pickaxe in your right hand, so you know you can just throw torches up as you're going. They they added like stone cutting machines, so you're not losing all kinds of crap when you make you know stairs out of stone. And there's bees and they oh, I like I basically had to relearn the game when I got back into it. You know, I haven't played it in. <laughs> Shoot, I don't think I've played it in probably four years, maybe maybe five years. It's been a while. But, it, yeah, they they added so much stuff to this game since I last played it. KD2, AFV. Yeah, I've seen all that crap. Um, been kind of following it. I still don't know what a lot of it is, but it seems pretty cool. Well, I see all those guys doing the dual wield, like, where they, um, hang on kitty cat um they use that fishing rod in fights like all the time it's like fishing rod and a sword or whatever and I, I don't know how it exactly works but pretty interesting i'm sure i'll learn i'm i'm like a super noob in minecraft but i'll be able to play it with like all the good settings and um high fps and stuff now so it'll probably be like a lot more fun Anyway, W2BTK. I've been wanting to get a uh, Call of Duty. My son plays Call of Duty a lot online. And I've been wanting to get a PS4. Or on here and like, you know, you can like cross-platform play, which I d didn't know about. Which is pretty cool, but... Yeah, I don't know if I want to put any games on here. Like, I don't want to stretch it too far, you know what I mean? And, you know, mess up the integrity of the SDR or anything. Because that's what, I like, this computer's for, is for this radio. This other extracurricular stuff can't get in the way of that. Yeah, I keep the SDR separate. The machine that's on is what I'm streaming on now. 
It's like an I, it's a slow I-7 with eight cores, and I think it's got 16 gigs of RAM, so for just the SDR, it's, o it's overkill, but I'm streaming with it right now, too, but I put my settings down to like pretty crappy, so it's not, it's not hurting it. Yeah, that's cool. Anyway. Band's kind of dead. Well, there's not that many. If you think there'd be more people out here for a Friday night. And I have a three-day weekend that I was surprised with today, which is pretty cool. My boss knows, like, I've been busting my ass lately because we've been shorthanded. And the one guy's a piece of crap. The other guy, like, quit. He fired somebody. And then, like, I lost a good friend this morning. Well, found out he passed away like a month ago, but I didn't know, and I just found out this morning. Um, that and like it's just been a whole bunch of crap. So my boss was like, "Hey, uh, you went off tomorrow, Monday?" I was like, "What did I do wrong?" <laughs> He's like, "No, nothing. He just, you know, um, figured I'd give you a couple days off to recharge your batteries." I said, Phew. "I said, man, isn't this a welcome relief?" Well, that's nice of him. I guess you work for a pretty good guy. Yeah, my boss is the man. He, you know, he tr you know, I bust my ass for him. He treats me well for it, so... Um, I enjoy where I work. You, gotta, you have to enjoy where you work, man. Like, <laughs> I've bounced around from, like, a lot of different shops just because of, I, I couldn't work there. I didn't like working there, you know? I have to really enjoy where I work or... I just can't do it, you know, eight to ten hours a day, five or six days a week. It's just, can't spend the majority of my time at a place I, I don't like going to. My boss is a real asshole, AV3AL. Yeah, he, yeah, I guess you are an asshole. Ha! Those aren't good words to say on the air. W2BTK. They think you're... No, you're right, Billy. Excuse me, I'm sorry. Yes, you can say sphincter. I I wasn't thinking. My apologies to the to everyone listening, because I know there's probably quite a few. If they can say it on Blazing Saddles, we can say it on 85 or uh, 80 meters. It's all good, Perry. I I dropped an S bomb the other night on. 38, wherever we were talking, when we were talking about, uh, getaway driver and, and, uh, and W7 BBI and those guys. Oh, yeah, I remember that. Yeah, I got pretty passionate. <laughs> yeah, that was a pretty passionate conversation. Yeah, you know, it, it happens. <laughs> I try not to, I, I really do try not to, like, curse on the air because, like, you ask people who've talked to me off the air... Like I I curse I'm I'm a heavy cursor I it's it's just the way I talk man I've been working in shops all my life and you know but I it's so sometimes it's it's I've really gotta you know mind my p's and q's. Yeah, well, I mean, same with me. I at work and stuff. I'm you know I'm on these job sites with all the other trades and everybody's cursing and carrying on and. I don't know, and and honestly, when I was on the CB and stuff, you know, nobody cared. It, you would curse, and that that was the norm, and and that was my like operating mindset. And it was honestly not that difficult to switch gears when I got on HF, because it's just a little more. I mean, you're having like real conversations most of the time, so you're you're not there. But every once in a while, yeah, when I'm really like. Uh, into whatever it is, I I can let them slip here and there. I mean, I think I heard Clark do one the other day too, um, when he was talking about his Jeep. Yeah, the warranty on his Jeep. He got all he got all worked up about it and f bomb in there, or something like that. So everyone does it. Don't worry about it. W two B T K. Yeah, I remember that when when Clark. Yeah, it was funny. He was he was really mad at that Jeep. He didn't have a good experience with uh, with Chrysler products. <laughs> 
Yeah, well, the only time like I've really on here really let it fly was I think I got into it with my old man like one day, one night on here. Like I was already in a crappy mood, and I don't know, he just said something to me, and I just lashed out like an idiot. <laughs> Felt really bad for it. Um, <clears throat> but even on on CB, man, I I always I always tried to like watch my language. I I don't know, I just. For some reason, like, that was, like, ingrained in me as a kid, like, watching my dad, you know, growing up around radio and stuff was, like, you know, not cursing on the radio, because he always was always big on it, so I guess it kind of rubbed off on me, so, um, but yeah, it's, it's, <laughs> some channels on CB, man, are just as bad, or, or, or you could say 7200 or whatever is just as bad as some places on the CB, but, but, but for the most part, you know, the guys I talk to, and, um, you know, the most of the radio on 11 meters around here, the guys don't really cuss. Um, you know, Channel 19 they do, but not really anywhere else. Hey, man. Toby never cursed on the radio, on the CB. I, it was like rare you would hear him dropping f f bombs and stuff. Maybe, maybe every once in a while, but Toby never really did that. He's one of those those guys too. Well, now I may not have, uh, I may not have uh, cursed all that much on the uh, CB, but I think I was, uh, I think I had a way of uh, not shutting up sometimes, just go on and on and on, like an old buzzard, but on the CB. <laughs> One of them, there alligators, came out. Yeah, that was back in the two by eight days, but once you got the, you know. The, the coffin you had to <laughs> you had to learn how to key you know with some duty cycle low duty cycle two by eight Mar, I smack you upside the head with a two by four key man oh yeah the big boy <laughs> yeah that took a little bit of uh it took some discipline to not keep the hammer down on that too long and well I mean you seen what I had to do to it to keep it cool. Yeah, the, those heat sinks in that are not adequate for the amount of transistors are in there. And, you know, the, the think about how much dissipation you were doing, you know, and look at those two heat sinks. It's, it's a joke. So, yeah, massive airflow. And you figured that out. Hey, that's kind of similar to what's going on over here. <laughs> Yeah, Bill, we're going to circle, we're circling right back around to the fan club. Billy, I was going to ask you, uh, are you running a different mic or something? Because I hear a lot of blower noise tonight. I don't normally hear. I'm running a new blower, and it's a, it's a beak of boy. I got my SPL meter out and held it at my operating position, and C weighted, it was 96 dB here, right here, by the microphone of wind and then I turn it off and the noise floor drops like 30 40 dB. Dude that's so loud. That is so loud. Oh what what have you named it yet? The blower? Um well I it's it's an extension uh a jock strap if you will to the entire big blue phenomenon. So you it's referred to as big blue. And my watt meters are blue, too. Uh-huh. Yep. yep. I would have named it, like, Maria or Susie. Big Blue's fine. It, uh, I'm not the first owner. Call mine Big Red, Kimmy. Big Blue? Oh. Mm. Big Blue's what I call my app. The beak of blue. I got the real big blue though, the big owl big blue. The big owl big blue? Hmm. Coast to coast. I call mine cherry red. She's got two great big old three five bugs in her. Yeah. No, I'm lying to you guys. I had to put the, the blower on there because I put the second tube in there yesterday. Oh, dear. 
Yes, sir. Yeah, I can tell that the second tube's in there. So we're lowballing again. We were lowballing before, we're lowballing again. Are you uh, are you driving it all the way or conservatively? I'm, it's laughing at me. My grid meter is is barely moving. Like it just like eh, eh, a little bit off of you know the zero when I'm talking. Yeah, I mean you're a good strong 10 dB over here. Yeah, you're like 40 over here. Yeah. Good on the 10 dB over S9 W2BTK. Yeah, you're like 55 to 60 over here. I'm just, I'm just tickling things. Give it a try. Well, I mean, you... <laughs> I mean, any, any more would be just... It would be absolutely ridiculous, let's put it that way. I mean, right now, you're the strongest thing on here. Like, by far. <laughs> so, like, I'm talking about, like, on here, like, at all all the operators that I hear and see. Yeah, I mean, by, like, a good 6 dB, at least. Oh, man, the, the 8K is gone. It makes me sad. My antenna better, man. That's what I gotta do next. Just gotta get it up. Well, your antenna's only, like, 30 feet, isn't it? It's about, it's not 40 feet, but it's almost 40 feet. I would say it's between 35 and 40 feet. Dude, the, the biggest improvement in my station was moving my antenna from third, like about 30 to 35 feet up to 65 feet. Yeah, I switched to ladder line, you know, open wire line at the same time. Um, you know, I made the, the height the adjustment. But I, I don't think the open wire feeder, like, made, you know, it gave me, like, 10 dB of improvement. I really think the height, you know, the height really, uh, is really what did it. I would like to go up to, like, 90 feet if I could, but I've, I can't. I don't have a big enough tree. Yeah. Well, I got the tower, the 60-foot crank up. I just got to dig a hole and fill it with concrete. So, that'll be that. But your, your open wire feeder got you low loss. That That's what it did for you. Super low loss. What do you need for that? About two yards? Well, I, um... I was running LMR 400 out to my my coax fed antenna. You know, and, and it was a 1.2 to 1 match. And it was about... 75 feet of it so the loss was really negligible anyway i mean at this frequency with lmr 400 and that shorter run i mean there's pretty much no loss so i guess this is a little less but i don't think it'd be negligible in my opinion it's it's a little less everywhere you, you tune off a 3885 and tell me how much loss you get in that coax you know that's all i'm saying but um it, it's a lot more concrete than that, I think. The hole I'm gonna go with is probably, you know, five or six feet deep, four foot by four foot, something like that. Or I could go not quite as deep and spread it out a little more, but like four by four by five at minimum. I've been absolutely happy with this vertical half wave up it up. AB3 AL. Yeah, I, I can't wait to get, like, out in the country and get a little, on a little bit of property, you know, and get a quad, lower noise floor. Like, my noise floor right now, you know, I know my, like, my S meter reads high, but, like, the way they, the way the, uh, they, they, ca they, they calculate, like, in the S meter reading in this radio is weird, because, like, my pan adapter floor... Is like a minus like 120 dB, and that's right around where my father's is, um, at his house. But his S meter is like an S7 to an S8, and he's and that's like the, as quiet as quiet gets over there. And these it still reads relatively high, you know. Uh, I just think like this S meter on this thing is just very very uh, considerate. And the the noise receiving too. 
I just built because I bought a couple of uh, SDR play receivers. I built a uh, 40 meter full wave loop and put it on my wooden fence uh, down the side yard. And the antenna would heal back, and I was at fed it with a fed it with a one to one balance. It's just for receive. It's something I had laying around. And on that antenna, I am picking up every eight kilohertz from the AM broadcast band all the way up to six meters a 20 over noise. Uh, as, as soon as I switch over to any kind of vertical antenna, that noise is gone. It would be like power lines or something like that. I don't know. 30 dB polarization loss or something. I no, it's a, every 8KC, it's a, a very narrow carrier. It's, it's definitely some kind of television or, or very electronic project. It's not a power line. Um, you know, the vertical, uh, my lot's 20 by 80, and my halfway vertical is, uh, the base of it is literally 10 feet away from that loop. <laughs> Dave sent me a video, he's got his little, um, it's like a radio with one of those little whip antennas on it, you know, like the three foot whip on his porch down there, he's receiving me pretty well. Yeah, I can, you're like 10 over into my dummy load. <laughs> cool. Morning over in Ohio, kb 8 SMU. Billy, key up for like 10 seconds. I'm going to switch over to my dummy load. Hold on. What's going on? I saw you in the chat there. Um, I'm trying some new stuff with the stream. I'm not, I don't have any camera. Like, I can't see myself. So I'm like pretending it's not there. But, um, good to hear you. Perry's in his dummy load listening to me. So this is a pretty screwed up test. W2BTK on Montana Mountain in beautiful New Jersey. He's got to plug his antenna back in. All right, you peeked over. <laughs> You're peeking at an S7 on my dummy load, and the and the noise floor is an S S1. So yeah. I just want good coverage. <laughs> I'd say your coverage map is fairly large. W3 MMR. And hello, Shane. Hello. Hello, Shane. You can hear this this week's station. KB3 AL. KB8 SMU. You're you're right at an S9. I, I've got somebody QRMing QRMing in the lower sideband here. When any of you guys key up, though, I mean that that stuff is gone. Ah, boy. Yeah, I uh. Yeah, yeah, everybody keys up that, uh, stuff goes, what is going on out here? Oh my god, they're barking at a dog across the street. The key is to make sure someone's always keyed up. That's right, no dead air, Clark. That's right. That's it. I'm throwing the switch until I get my... 32 pill radio on the air. Key man. Hi, Clark. I got a bottle of Advil if you need it. Good evening. Are you getting used to my blower noise yet? Oh, uh, goes well with that quorum in the background. You know, you took a really long time to, to make dinner. I, I think you must have been doing something else. Um, that, which is not fair because we want Clark. 
You're doing a fine job. Keep up the good work. What? Where did you go though? Like, what happened? Oh, and you, I, I didn't hear what happened yesterday. Why the hell did you have to go into work? Um, what, what, for an emergency? Oh yeah, station went off the air. Well. Well, one of the elements of the capacity hat at the top of the antenna broke off, and that created a soaring reflected power issue, and, well, that was bad news, so I had to uh, go over there and do retune the, uh, the antenna network, and that fixed it for now. Tomorrow, all new capacity hat. Uh, oh, man, that, that antenna, I'm so proud of it. But it was windy as a MF here yesterday, man. I had 35, 40 mile an hour winds, um, you know, and the, the velocity meters on my roof. So it's not even like way up on top of a building like your antenna. So I'm not surprised. Something might have hit it, man. Like something might have been airborne flying around and, and clocked that thing. I don't know how else it would break like that, but... Sounds like you had the same wind I had yesterday. Darn right, but probably not nearly as much as going on in your shack right now. And one PCG. You got that right. It's shaking my TV, Clark. It's it's oscillating my t my television. Forty inch television. W two B T K. Billy, you're off frequency, by the way. I know. Everybody was um, came down here and, and saying that I was splashing them on the 85, so I looked at, like, right where my S's roll off, I stuck that right on 3880. So I'm running, like, 7.2, and they're probably getting every last little bit of it, so that's why I'm way down here. Well, I'm looking at them, and they're wide as hell anyway, so it doesn't matter. Well, I, I tried to do my part. I don't know. It, nobody's bothering me. I mean, I, I don't hear anything. And I have that, uh, whatever that crap is on our lower side being notched out. Yeah, I'm just listening to the upper side band, so I don't know. Uh, I don't hear that noise. Poor Clark. Clark, how are you dealing with that? What are you tuned way off? You can't tune too far up. No, it it comes and goes. I was gonna uh, take a visit around the different SDRs and see where it's coming from. I went to uh, some European ones and it's not there. So very interesting. It must be of what hemisphere. Yeah, I was starting to think I had uh, local noise, but. You guys are reporting it too. It uh, looks like some kind of data signal. Good evening. Kilo Mike. Kilo Mike. It sounds like Stanag. S T A N N A. Was it S T A N A G? But it's but that's always in Europe. So I don't know. It's it's that, but here. Weird. Did anyone else hear the Kilo Mike two station? No. I saw the carrier, but that one's off frequency and it's driving my sync detector. Oh, right. Breaking station light it up again. Oh well. I heard kilo mic two kilo and I didn't get the rest of the suffix anyway. I heard you. Name is uh, Chris, your Radio India Sierra in Ithaca, New York. Good evening. Yeah, hello, Chris. Um, you're a little bit low uh, here in New Jersey, but, uh, well, the first time, then you came up a little that time, so I'm hearing you pretty well. Um, got a couple other guys out there. But I got you in the log, KM2KM, W2BTK. Oh, thank you very much. Uh, not sure I have everything exactly the way it should be. 
I'm on a great system here. Uh, sea line twins with L4B. Yeah. We'll slow my clothes. I do believe in the face mask thing. Out in uh, better to be safe than sorry. I'm an old man now and I don't want to die from some damn virus. G1 ETP. Hey, Rich. Long time no here. Well, I, I believe I had it. Oh, I'm hearing you here in Maryland. We're talking about a band with, uh, I mean, width of uh, a hair on a dial. Over. A little more. Uh, double what you just did. Can you can you zero beat? We just came down off of 3875 to give the the fellows up on 85 a little more room. Well, so you're, you're up a little high, but I hear you just fine. Uh, if it's a pain in the butt, you know, just stay there. But the, some of the guys are running sync detectors, so we're probably driving them crazy. <laughs> Major changes in your, where, you're, where you are, but you are a little for now. It's uh. It's good enough. It's, uh, so, welcome, welcome. Yeah, good evening, uh, Chris. Let me make sure I got it. Well, it's working, uh, it's working in southeastern Pennsylvania. Uh, Chris, good evening. <laughs> Excuse me, the name here is Perry. Uh, Papa Echo Romeo Romeo Yankee. The call is W3MMR. Whiskey 3, Mike, Mike, Romeo, and you sound great down this way. Good Lord, sorry about my phone. It's 25 over S9 uh, here into uh, Chester, Pennsylvania, seven miles southwest of Philadelphia. Good evening. Okay, sir, thank you very much for the report. Um, I've got my RS way back from the end here. Um, and, you know, it goes back on these rigs, so um, it's a 40. Right back and forth. Everybody coming in and that level. Yeah, well good eighty meters gets good this time of night. This is this is about as good as it gets as far as conditions will go, uh here on seventy five meters I should say. Well there's a lot of other guys in here. I'm sure a lot of them are hearing you. Clark's in there and uh you just talked to Mike and Billy and, and I'm sure they're all hearing you quite well. Welcome to uh Welcome to 3873, WF3MMR. Clark. It wasn't because I was listening at 3873, but I'm hearing him now fine. There you go. Clark, why don't you uh, ramp things up a little? I got to I gotta do what you did and make some dinner, only I'm not going to disappear for like, you know, an hour. I'll be right back. W2BTK. Anyone else think that sounded like an admonishment? I don't know what it sounded like. But Billy brought up dinner, and now I got hungry. So I'm probably going to shut it down for the night and go eat. <laughs> I'll catch you guys next time. KD2 AFB, 7-3. All right, Toby, good catching up with you tonight. Enjoy dinner. See you, Toby. W3 MMR. And there's Bruce. Always great. Yeah, that's good. Hearing everybody pretty good and uh, hear Perry well and uh, <laughs> BTK as well. Hope we get something good to eat. Yeah, 
Mario Gaby, Budley, uh, 20 over into Pennsylvania. Sounded great. Uh, using a different microphone this evening, and hopefully I just sound like I always sound. I think it sounds better. That makes sense. Uh, good then. Because I actually changed rigs to him back to the uh, 718. Yeah, I think it sounds cleaner. And I think the other guys would agree. <laughs> yeah, I like it. Okay, that's good. Um, I did notice with my scope, um, I got the trapezoid pattern up. It seems to respond a lot quicker than uh, the other two. Of course, everything on that thing was stock, so <laughs> I think a lot of ALC was going on. And of course, with this setup, I have the little uh, box to keep the ALC from working, so uh, everything's happy. A good deal. It sounds like it's working just fine. That's for sure. Where uh well there's a whole other people in here. Whole other listen to me, a whole lot of people in here, so I'm gonna shut my pie hole. Maybe get into the background. And I'm gonna try to put this exhaust fan on my amplifier. I mean I got it off the shelf and I set it down here in front of me and then I just get you know, sidetracked and my adult ADD kicks in. W three MMR. Okay, well, thanks for the report. And, uh, to the guy up in Utica, uh, his rig's sounding pretty good down here. Not a super strong signal, but uh, it definitely sounds good. He's got something good going on there. Uh, this is KM2KM. Two, KM. Uh, two takes is Ithaca. Ithaca, that makes sense. Over here, a little north of Binghamton, south of Syracuse. Just to give an idea of where I am. Thank you, over. Okay, um, big difference between the two. <laughs> I'm sure. Sorry about that. Uh, yeah, we're in a little place called uh, Perkasy, about 40 miles north of Center City, Philadelphia, 20 miles south of Allentown. So, uh, you're doing well. <coughs> well, um, I do have a. It's worked out. Far no major issues. Got too many systems. And so I'm using the verdict. First time. The issue with the issues that are with it are that the bias supply switching and the screen supply switching is not working properly. When you go to the sideband position, it's supposed to change the bias on the PA tubes, the four four hundreds, to uh, from 150 volts, you know, cutoff bias to 90 volts. And it doesn't do that. So I isolated the uh, the lead to the PA grid, and I fed it with the regulated power supply that I'm using for the modulator bias, and it worked really good, but I, I had tried two different drivers. I tried the, the Central Electronics 20A, which is what I really want to pair it with, and the 20A made enough carrier to tune this thing up to 1,500 watts out CW, but then when I switched over to sideband, the 20A didn't make enough voice PEP to get me over about I don't know three four hundred watts so there's something wrong with the 20A and I haven't done anything to that rig I just bought it it's not restored so I try to drive it on sideband with the uh, the ICOM 718 and reduced power and the linearity of the ICOM was terrible at reduced power and then there was the hum and noise and the phase noise so it was a really trashy signal. I mean, I, I, I could have, but to me, in my you know professional ethic, the results with the 718 were just not acceptable to put onto an antenna. So back to square one. That was a bit of a letdown. But uh, we're so we're having fun with this thing. But on AM plate modulated, it's uh, it's been good, and I have no issues. I'm just driving it with RF from the. Uh, the icon. God, I'm old buzzarding. Rich, I'm going to turn it to you, and uh, I'm probably going to sign out of here with this one, uh, or maybe come back for one more. K1ETP in the group, W2JBL. Oh, it turned into round table.
Hey, okay, Chris, K1 ETP. Well, I think the problem with the Empire Buster, like the Thunderbolt I used to have, the, uh, the plate voltage is just too low for those tubes. I had a pair of PL-175s in my Thunderbolt, and I had that on a couple of times, you know, grid-driven. But, you know, for all the trouble, the output just wasn't that great, about a 1,000 watts. You know, I got a little uh, solid-state amp here that easily puts out 1,200 to 1,300 watts with about uh, 50 watts in. So I think they... Uh, I think they used the same plate transformer in the uh, in the uh, Johnson kilowatt as they did in the um, in the Thunderbolt that uh, 2,000 watt job. Anyways, yeah, I've been uh, I've been catching the DX on 20. <clears throat> I got a three element mono banner on 20, and I've been on there a lot. And yeah, it's like uh, shooting fish in a barrel. Really, really good conditions uh, about a week ago. Had a lot of fun. And uh, same thing with 40. I put up a, uh, I have three 40 meter antennas now. I've got the full wave delta loop. And I've got the ZS6BKW, which is sort of a collinear antenna on 40. You know, it's 88 feet long. And this fall I put up a half wave vertical on 40. 67 uh, foot vertical. And, uh, you know, feeding it with a 49 to 1 transformer, so no radials needed. And, boy, that thing works great. You've got a very, very low angle, a takeoff angle, about 18 degrees, theoretically. And uh, it works uh, very, very good. And I've had a lot of fun uh, working DX with that thing. And I keep switching between all three antennas on 40. And uh, now the vertical really holds it on its own when the band is open. Tonight, um, not a big difference between the vertical and the uh, and the dipole. So a lot of uh, obviously uh, probably a lot of high angle stuff for high angle and low angle. I don't know. And as far as uh, you know, with Steve, uh, antibodies not protecting you against getting it again. Well, you better hope that's not the case because. Otherwise, there's about 80 companies out there wasting their time trying to develop their own vaccine because the vaccine works by tricking the body into uh, producing antibodies uh, against the disease. So if antibodies don't protect you, we're all screwed. And I don't think that's the case. Most viruses, uh, you develop antibodies against it, and uh, it protects you until the virus mutates. That's why... The most popular coronavirus out there, the common cold, there's no vi there's no uh, vaccine for it because it mutates uh, in a matter of, uh, you know, a few days. So um, it's not going to be any virus that's going to protect you. You know, you may, you may have antibodies against the cold you got three years ago and get, get that same cold again. Um the same virus and uh, you'll be you'll be protected uh, you'll you the cold that's why sometimes you get a cold and uh, yeah you know it lasts two days and sometimes you get a cold that lasts two weeks so um, I think uh, you're being revisited by an old uh, an old friend there that you have antibodies against anyways that's my uh, un uh, unprofessional opinion uh, WNSTH Steve we'll see you later if you're going to take off K1 ETP Oh. Oh. WA1STH back. Hopefully I got it. Let me check. Hi. Uh well Rich, no, I understand what you're saying. The the issue is that the way they're all talking, they don't know too much about it, so we'll see what happens. Hopefully it doesn't mutate fast enough to work against the antibody theory, but who knows? They're saying they don't know how long the antibodies last. There's, there's just too much, uh, too much discussion and not enough facts, I guess. But anyways, we'll see how it goes. And George, I heard you there, and uh, I think there's somebody else there too. So I'm going to throw it up in the air, Chris. Uh, uh, let's let Chris come back, and if he's got any comments, because he was going to jump out of here, and then he. Can... 
ATHU. This is Kilo Mike 2, Kilo Mike. Chris is Ithaca, New York. I just joined the group this evening. Oh, cool. Yeah, I'm hearing you down here. Uh, yes, Jim here in Thompson's Cove, New York. No, Ithaca, well. Uh, yeah, my folks lived up in uh, Dryden. Uh, well, my brother lived up there, too, uh, in Dryden. Uh, went to Ithaca College. Uh, yeah, my mom, well, dad was sick, but uh, they moved They moved to uh, Glenville uh, about two and a half years ago. I used to go up there a lot. Uh, nice area. I kind of know it fairly well there. And, you know, Dryden's not that far from Ithaca. But you, you're making a good trip down here. Uh, I'm in Tompkins Cove, New York, on the Hudson River, about three miles south of Bear Mountain and 40 miles northwest of New York City. Oh, yeah, driving is just up the road, but not very far. I don't know the exact mileage, but we go in and out of driving all the time. And uh, I had a brother-in-law who lived up there uh, for years. Then he hit the road as an retiree in an RV. Okay, yeah, very good there, Chris. No, I'm, I'm here on your phone. Uh, wow. Well, Probably just band conditions that uh, faded out. Uh, yeah, I'm running about a 100 watts carrier out of an old uh, Harvey Wells DBS 50 on this end. But there, there is some sort of a noise out there. It sounds like a helicopter running or something like that. I heard that come in there. But I've heard it out there in the past. I'm not sure exactly what it is. But yeah, they yeah, my folks moved out of Dryden. Uh, like I said, like about two and a half years ago. But uh, been you know been the Esco naturally because uh, it is down the road. Nice area, really really nice area. And uh, you know it's 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 funny because it's kind of a way out of a way, but uh, you know there's all the colleges around here. You can up in that area, you can get whatever you want. Uh, KM2 KM KC2 DHU. Well, we're, we're talking constantly about how great it is being a college town because it's sort of a, it's not the whole economic dynamo, but it's a college in Cornell made up by just about 6,000 people. And now, of course, everybody's been sent home, and the place is the ghost town. Uh, you walk across any of the campuses, and you can make it across the whole campus and not see anybody. And when it's at night time, you know, well, somebody's using their office, and they don't have to worry about social isolation or separation because there are many floors between life and uh, many offices. Uh, that's the big, the big question up here is, will they open? Nobody wants to ask the question, but how can they open it for all? You know, I would have to ask my brother. Um, like I said, he he went to Ithaca College. Uh, he worked for Ithaca Colleges. Ithaca College for a good while. Uh, worked in a couple other colleges, and now he well, uh, he doesn't live in Glenville. Uh, yeah, I think he's in Schenectady proper, which is just outside of um, Glenville. And uh, I, I forget, there's, there's little colleges around there, too. He works in one of those colleges, and uh, his girlfriend works for uh, RPI, Rensselaer Polytechnical. And I think that's one of the first colleges he started uh, working in uh, when he first got out of Ithaca. You know, years ago, he worked for RPI for a while. Um, he lived over there. But, uh, yeah, he worked for Ithaca, but he still worked, you know, for the colleges. Um, can you give him a call? I'm going to ask him about, ask him about that, what, he's, what, he's, what the, the thing is as far as the colleges go. I think 
Andrew was on the radio today, and as far as I know, that in most schools in New York, as as of what I heard today, are uh, closed for the rest of the for the school year. Now, I I don't know how that applies to colleges, but uh, yeah, I would imagine yeah between Ithaca and uh, you know. Um, Especially Cornell, for crying out loud, yeah, the place is, is like a ghost town. And it, you know, they're always uh, usually bustling. It's you know, a lot of things have changed. It's really kind of weird. Well, I have a new point in Cornell. She's a sophomore this year, and coming up close to the spring break, uh, the university is early March. That's when the schools are being closed. Uh, the university said, okay, everybody pack up and go on home and don't come back. We'll do everything virtually and everybody scrambled. I have a daughter who... So it's, it, it, at, at that point, it's significant, you know, trash. Yeah, I get your saying. Um, so, yeah, I don't know. There's a little bit. Not too bad, though. I don't know. I didn't really see it. Uh, do you have any attenuation in line with your receiver? I use a receiver that doesn't need attenuation. I got yeah. you. Well, oh well, I'm on 85 now, so I don't have to worry about it. No, uh, sorry to take over. W2BT guy. That's all right. Don't talk with your mouth full. <laughs> I'm using a modified Collins R390A. You can pin the S meter with an amp so it doesn't overload. Oh, That's what I'm care. up to. But it's on multiple receivers. Before I ever say anything to anybody about bandwidth, I'll listen on multiple receivers and, uh, and so on and so forth uh, before I say anything. But, uh, Jesus, Rich, Steve, uh, and uh, and the multitudes. Good night. Sorry, I just I just crashed the QSO, but I I'm shutting the radio off. W2JBL. Yeah, uh, see you, Chris. Good to hear you. Oh, yeah. It's W-A-1-I-W-Q Friday. Wall-to-wall -wall and treetop tall. APW, when'd you get back on the air? Hey, Steve, what's going on? 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 About two months ago, two, three months ago. Yeah, very good. Sounded marvelous. I haven't uh, heard you for quite a while. Yeah, Steve, uh, life sometimes throws you little bumps in the road, and sometimes those bumps turn into the big bumps. Well, yeah, I recall all of that, uh, and I'm glad to see that you uh, you get back on the air. WA1STH. Yeah, nice and strapping up here. Yeah, where are you anyway? I'm in the uh, coast of Maine in Brunswick. Oh, very good. Very good. Well, you got it done, and you got it done right. The station sounds marvelous. Yeah, this is just a little valiant. The uh, 4x1 will be back on, probably in the fall. And then uh, I'll have some serious juice to throw around. Well, conditions are such tonight that it, it, it seems as though everybody has serious juice tonight. Yeah, singles are very strapping all right. Yeah, that's good. Good. I'm glad to see 75s in good shape. But, uh, yeah, no, you sound a good, Steve. Now, you're down in still New Hampshire, right, still? Yep, I'm down in Kensington near Exeter, Hampton Beach area, Seabrook, that area. Oh, yeah, I know that well. I uh, was uh, in my little hiatus. I was uh, docked in uh, Stratum for a while. Oh, just up the street. Just up the street. Yeah, yeah. And uh, Brunswick, that's a good place to be. Yeah, we're, you know, it's funny, it's weird. It's like we're in the COVID-19 bubble up here, you know. You know that the world's going to shit around you, but up here it's kind of like, yeah, you know, business as usual. Yeah, it's it's rapidly turning that, uh, that, that way everywhere, I think that was kind of funny to set up some rules that said you had to do this, 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 and then you could open up this way, and, uh, and everybody just said to hell with that, and they were just opening up, making their own rules. Yeah, no, I think they uh, appeared to me and they decided to start opening things up, but you got to wear a mask, and uh, if you go anywhere, any any of the stores now, 
Well, you know what? We'll all get less colds and flus and whatever if we keep up this mask stuff. Yeah, nobody can smile at you. Yeah, <laughs> that's true. Uh, just think about all the obscene things you can do under that mask, Billy. I just think it's like I I was depressed at the grocery store, man, with all the lines and like everybody's like, don't come near me. And, you know, like I I saw I made eye contact with some woman like we, you know, we had to like shuffle around each other or something. And, you know, like I gave her a big smile and I thought to myself, like, how dumb is that? Like, she can't tell that I'm smiling. She just, you know, like and I thought about it for a second. I was like, man, it's it's kind of depressing, like, you know. It was the last time you saw a smiling face in public. You can't. Yeah, how are you going to smile at all those good-looking chicks? I mean, you know, they don't even know you're smiling. I mean, I, I don't know how you're going to do it. Definitely going to crack your style. <clears throat> yeah, what if, you, what if you're out there playing the field now? How, how depressing can that be? It's got to be pretty dry. <laughs> no, um, what's that website? No, uh, wildsmash.com. You're good. Wild Smash? Why, why are you good there? It's like you, you'll meet chicks that, that want to smash. Is that the new terminology for it now? Yeah. No, oh, man. You're talking to a bunch of, uh... Uh, almost octogenarians here. Yeah, I mean, we've gone away from what we used to call it to we went to hooking up and now we're at Smash. Yeah, you know, Smash her out. Billy, uh, I, I thought you were a fan of Grinder. No, what's that? Well, it's like Tinder, but for the fellas that like fellas. How do you know that? <laughs> I know that because I have uh, a couple of of uh, clients that are of that persuasion, and they keep harassing me. Did I see you on Grinder? <laughs> yeah, no, I I knew about that, and uh, no, I I I'm I'm not on Grinder. He's on. He's not on Grinder. He's on Smasher. He ain't knocking boots over it, fellers. Yeah. I've never been on Wild Smash. I just hear people talking about it on social media. I don't even know if it's a real thing. It's got all this romantic terminology. The women must be eating that right up. Yeah, let's go smashing tonight. We gotta get it out of our system because they're gonna take over tomorrow. Um, all the all the women of Ham Radio. I'm back in the season aging days. Oh yeah, remember those? Yeah, season aging. That's uh, that was the grinder of the 1960s and 70s. Oh, I don't know. Steve probably never knew of Roger, but uh, he won season H. He was a character. Yeah, there was a guy. He's now long gone, but uh. His call was K1C's at H, and he was, uh, he was out there doing all the clubs in Boston back in the 60s and 70s, the Boston Club and Oliver's, and, you know, I know that means nothing to you guys, but uh, those, were the, those were the places to go and the places to be seen at, and that was Roger, and he was out there picking up chicks all the time, and uh, Tim gave it the term, uh, C's at H-ing. so when you went out on the town, you went out C's at H-ing. Uh-huh. Well, that's a nice code name for it. Oh, Richie. Joey's cooking dinner, and he actually brought it down. Oh, these kids are worth something. Oh, man. How can I train my kids to do that? Didn't you ever watch the Jersey Shore on MTV? They had a whole room uh, at that place dedicated, the Smush Room. Well, you got a you got a uh, a modern day urban dictionary living with you, Joe. You should be uh, right up to par with all the uh, all the lingo. Yeah, Joey, they're rather than hooking it up. The uh, uh, says smash in this room. Is that is that? What you, well, yeah. There's like a bunch of different words. That's one of them. That's one of them. 
Yes. Yeah, so well, he's 24. You don't even know. He's right from the, uh, the heart of New York City. That's kind of... Uh, yeah. Uh-oh. Whoops. Yeah, sorry. Uh, you know, uh, the seven-second delay isn't working tonight. <laughs> I recognize well, that third term. Still using that word, Joe. I recognize the third term. Yeah, that's kind of the universal. That's kind of one of the, like, like Planck's constant. Yeah. Slamming, smashing, uh, yeah. Tape delay, tape delay. Well, when I was in the PI back in the uh, 60s in the military, we'd call it, I'm going out to get a, a shot of back tonight. I don't know really where that term came from, but that was the uh, the universal term. Shut it back. <laughs> where the hell do people come up with these terminologies? Well, if you let your imagination uh, go for a couple of minutes, you can you can figure out where that came from. Oh, I understand. It's just that it's all of this stuff is amazing. I didn't think that I was going to get edumacated here tonight, but that's the world's looking. Then you could be like really specific too. Instead of saying like, "Hey, yo, girl, you want to smash?" You could be like, "Yo, you down for some reverse cow?" Yeah, Billy, Joey really appreciated that. That's WA1 IWQ without tape delay, unfortunately. Yeah, this is absolutely amazing. Standby phone call. Yeah, I'm on a I'm on a six second delay here. This is K1 ETP. Ah <laughs> uh, yes. Thanks, sir. Oh, I mean, they really, really, really used to pay him a quarter for this. This is great. So, Joe, you got a sweet pee back there in uh, NYC? Wait, which one? Uh, well, yeah, yeah, he's, uh, uh, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah he's, he, he, he does fine in that category. Well, there you go. Like father, like son. Uh, the apple doesn't fall too far from the tree. Oops. This conversation is rated X. Jeez, you give a guy like me a heart attack. Is uh, Jillian going to go back? Is she going to open her shop now? Uh, well, she was planning on opening it uh, this weekend, but uh, all the ball there says no, another two weeks. Yeah, supposedly up here today, the salons and the barbershops should open. I mean, you wouldn't believe how long my hair is. It's longer than probably when you first met me. Well, Mo cut my hair uh, last week. She did a pretty good job. She used to cut my hair all the time, you know, you know, back in the 80s, 90s. And uh, then uh, my mother-in-law, who was a, was a hairdresser, she would cut it. And then my daughter became a hairstylist, so she cut it. So uh, I've been getting spoiled by my daughter cutting it. Uh, so now I'm back to my... My wife cutting it, and uh, she's uh, she was a little out of practice. Took took her uh, about four times longer than it took takes my. Oops, and fear's coming back. Takes my daughter to cut it. Wa one sth going away. Have a good night, guys. Hey, see you later, Steve. I did teach myself how to cut my own hair. I started at the beginning of this, and I'm pretty good at it now. Well, if you get those uh, clippers with the guides on them, I don't see uh, how you can go wrong. That's what I do. So how's it come out? It's fine. I used to go a lot lower, but I've been doing like a number three, which, you know, it cleans it up nice. You just you just keep going over everything like a million times, and you don't even have to like look in the mirror. You just do it by feel and like hit every spot on your head like five times. It, it looks fine. It's, it's even. 
So what's the number three like? Uh, what's that like? Three quarters of an inch or something? No, it's way shorter than that. It's like I don't know, quarter of an inch or a little less. Oh, a buzz cut. Yeah. Well, I still have all my hair, so. Yeah, I guess you use like a three on the sides and then like a five on the top or something like that. But oh, my wife was afraid to use it. She did, she did, she did it all with scissors, like she used to do it uh, 25 years ago. Probably comes out well like that, though. I mean, the buzz. It, if you have more skill, you can use scissors. But it, I mean, geez, if you want to see my haircut, I'm I'm live streaming right now on Twitch. You can you can watch my shack feed. I got the pan adapter, the oscilloscope, myself, uh, all the goodies on Twitch. Dot TV slash sniff my balls. Yeah, I know the username sucks. I'm gonna change it soon. But it's twitch.tv slash sniff my balls live stream of 3885. You see what's going on in here. What's up, Freedy? Yeah, I've checked you out on Twitch a couple of times. <laughs> I love that moniker. Yeah, sniff my balls. <laughs> I said, he's got to be kidding. I typed it in, and there he was. Oh, I see you've got the. Uh, you get the the high end rolled off a little bit tonight? Well, I've narrowed things up here because uh, those guys are uh, are up on uh, 75. So uh, I, I usually run 12 KC. I'm down to 8. Yeah, I could see that. Uh, the Anon has a pretty good brick wall filter. Mm. Yes, it does. Yeah, it's amazing. I should take a picture. I mean, you basically, you know, you're just filling that past in, but you get the four either side, and whoop, there's the clip. Whoop. Okay, here's uh, his 12 KC. How's that look? That looks good. Yeah, I mean, it sounds a little better. I know uh, you're a little nasally. Did you have the? Uh, did you have to go back downtown, or is that just to get a cold going? Yeah, I've got, uh, I got some issues here with my voice. Well, I, I used to be, you could blame it on yelling at the kids, but they're not anymore, and if you yell at most, she'll throw things at you. Yeah, I think all my radiation therapy is coming back to haunt me. Girl. Yeah, but it beats the alternative. Yeah, doing the dirt dive. Yep, I ain't warm food yet. Yeah, that's a good thing. It's the way you weigh one I have you. I'm not warm food yet either. Yeah, I know. You've been through it too. Well, not the radiation, but uh, it's, uh, what's this? Year 17. Oh, God. Yeah, I remember. Uh, yeah, that was, I was still at, at Sun Microsystems when that all went down for you. Yep, that was crazy. Yeah, for me it was, well, you know, the topical, and I was one of the ones that a lot of the, the folks that get it topically don't have uh, much of a problem with nausea and stuff. Uh, that wasn't the case for me, man. I <laughs> Those were not happy days when I had to do that topical stuff. You know, the floor of your still? Yep. Oh, man, it between, you know, feeling like your skin was just being burnt off, which apparently it was. It's a chemical peel. And then, uh, you know, being sick to your stomach. That wasn't fun. Well, imagine this. I got an IV three times for a week. Yeah, I remember I called you. I think I was talking to Mo one night. I called you, and I think you'd get on the phone or... Who's that? Did Will pick up or no? You and you just sounded like death warmed over. Oh man, like I'd get I'd get a five day course of therapy and on I'd be you know great day one, great day two, great day three, and day three, man, that was it. I just lived in the bathroom. Yep. Yeah, I just uh, it's funny because when they started me, it was like. You know, we're going through all the blah, 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 and, uh, 
chemical dermatological oncologist says, you know, the one thing he said, some folks, and it's very rare, you know, have the same sort of reactions that folks get when they get this IV. And I said, what do you mean? He goes, well, there's a fair amount of nausea. And I go, oh, all right, you know, I usually have a cast iron stomach. I won't bother me. <laughs> Think again. Yeah, we used to, uh, back in the 70s and 80s, we used to dispense that stuff like candy for keratosis. Yep. Well, then this guy was telling me, he said, you know, in Europe, uh, the plastic surgeons use it off-label. They do, uh, you know, beauty peel. Oh, yeah. Yep. Your skin will turn all red, and then the top layer will peel off. Yeah, I remember when I, the, the first time around, I mean, people were working going, oh, you, you know, your face looks so good. You know, when I finally came back, it was like, <laughs> yeah. And then, you know, realize that people do this voluntarily. Oh, well, I guess vanity is a wonderful thing. Yeah, uh, it's K1ETP. W2BTK. Sounding all right down there. That thing sounds great. Billy, what do you think of that? That's a Valiant Joe's running, just a regular Valiant. Well, it's not a regular, but it's, you know, it's a Valiant with 360 146s on it. Sounds good. Yeah, Billy, I, uh, I did a radical audioectomy to this thing. I basically ripped out everything in the audio um, subsystem from the mod transformer back to the microphone connector. It's all solid state to the uh, pair of uh, trio connected TV sweepies. So, yeah. Nice. Yeah, I'm all solid state modulator over here too, dude. That's the way to go. Uh, what are you doing for a mod transformer? No, I, I um, it's a, it's a S20. It's a UTC. No, it's I still have uh, the mod tubes are uh, a pair of uh, trio connected TV sweep tubes, but so I still have tubes in the uh, modulator. And I did this. Oh God, when I just the year I got back from grad school, it was like '81. Uh, Rich, I don't even know. I have to talk to Tim. Tim remembers the modifications better than I do. It's it's, it's pretty scary. Oh yeah, that's cool. That's like kind of what uh, Chris is doing. I never tried that. I just ditched the 807s in the Viking 2 and used the. Well, you know what I'm doing over here. Well, you know, Billy, really, you can tell me in a second. I'm not sure I do, but Rich, yeah, no, these are, uh, they were 60Q5s originally, or 60Q6s. And now, you know what, Tim, I was talking to him the other night about this, and I am not sure what they have for modular tubes in there anymore. Well, 60Q5s are more scrollful than 60Q6s, so they're probably 60Q5s. Yeah, but I think I ended up, I got a pair of uh, maybe six KD6s. Six CM6s? Is that what they are? Six CM7s? Mm -hmm. Or I think six KD6s? Something like that. I, I, you know what? I'm embarrassed. Uh, I never wrote it down in my uh, notebook. And I haven't a clue what's in there, but it works. Well, what are KT88s? Like 6550s, those are uh, power pintos. No, 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 they're not. KT88s aren't 6550s. Yeah, they're very similar. You know, KT88s. Yeah, no, um, the only reason I know that is because when I uh, had the Dynacos, I used to have a pair of Dynaco amplifiers for the uh, high end and mid range in the stereo system, you know, a pair of those. Uh, Mark III. Do so they have 6550, KT88s? They're kind of interchangeable. Oh, what am I thinking of then? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, back in the day, uh, KT88s was a big uh, audio output tubes. Yeah, and I think, uh, you know, they were, what was it, Muller? Maybe? Um, I think it was Muller. Uh, you know, it was the UK. Uh, Valve company, and they, they that's what they were pushing. That was their variant of the 6550s. 
And I know um, on the uh, Central Electronics 100V, the slot bucket rig, I have a pair of um, uh, Svetlana 6550s, you know, the uh, graphite plates, and they're very effective. Yeah, that's what I have in my uh, Ranger is a pair of Svetlana 6550s. <clears throat> But they're not exact replacements. The bias is completely different on those. Yeah, you gotta maybe tweak the bias. I don't even know. I think Svetlana. I don't even know if they're still around. But there, there was a very interesting um, pube company out of St. Petersburg. Yeah, they made good tubes. I do not think they're around. I haven't seen any Svetlanas in a while. They used to make um, 572Bs too. And. Uh, they, they made good tubes, but I, I think they're uh, they're out of business. You know, I guess there's no money in the, the valve business anymore. And those mallet tubes, boy, I'll tell you, a uh, 12AX7 will get you about 80 bucks. Yeah, yeah, it, it, it's you know the audio pools. That's a good thing. Well, wait a minute, I'm going to pause here. Ah, much better. Oh. Man, just use that. Just use a PA amp. Some solid state, super low THD audio PA amp as your modulator, man. Yeah, Billy, you want to haul ahead the double. We're just going to the refueling station. What did you say? I was saying you just use a solid state PA amp, at, you know, audio amp as your modulator. That's what I'm doing here with the Viking. Yeah. Yeah, if I had, you know, it's funny, with the uh, uh, 4x1, I use a pair of uh, 5860H, which are kind of, I, I guess in a way, sort of uh, to, to the first order, they're like a modern version of the 833s. They're in a uh, form factor, it looks like a 4x1, that sort of glass envelope structure. And what I did is, is before I modulated, I had a... Uh, one of those uh, Dynacos that I had mentioned earlier. Uh, Tim had actually suggested this and did a uh, direct coupled uh, driver stage. That worked out pretty well, but unfortunately, uh, that amplifier is not available anymore. Uh, so I think what I'm going to do uh, when I resurrect the uh, 4x1 is also I have a uh, uh, one of those SLA. Uh, 100 watt per channel amplifiers in the rack. I use one side for the uh, receive audio. I think the other side I'll get an ass backwards uh, output transformer, you know, 40, 50 watt class. We can find like a nice linear standard or uh, one of the the other, maybe one of the Hammond, you know, the higher performance uh, transformers. Then I'll use that. I know uh, Tom Wu has done, uh, you know, Tom's used direct, you know, MOSFETs, and that's the other way of doing it. I could actually, if I had the time, build a solid-state driver that would directly uh, couple to the uh, grids of the 65, of the, the uh, 5868s. Yeah, maybe. You know, when I don't have to work anymore and I have plenty of time, I'll do that. But I think in the interim, I'm just going to throw the uh, ass-backwards output transformer in there and see how that works. Yeah, the that works okay. The backwards transformer. Those things are kind of expensive, though. Those like Hammonds and stuff. And it's not like that perfect of a match. But you should try that. Use the one channel. 100 watts would be fine for that. Um, and the output of that, it's like a, what four or eight ohms, and you got to step that up. Let's see. The what I'm doing over here is the output's four ohms out of the modulator, and I step that up to about 2,900 ohms to feed the, my two 6146s. Um, I know you have three, so that changes the turns ratio on that a little bit, but it's basically four to 3,000 here. So the way I did it with really cheap stuff that works awesome, there's a company called Antec. They make toroidal power transformers. They're all, you know, anything from 10 VA up to, you know, uh, 1,000 VA. And I have two Antec transformers, both 115 volt primaries, and they're dual primaries and dual secondaries. So the first one is 115 to 55. The second transformer is a 115 to 800. And like I said, there's dual windings on, on primary and secondary, both of these. So 
the 50, the 115 to 55, I turn around backwards. I feed the 4 ohm output of my modulator into the 55 volt windings. Then the other side of that gets connected to the primary of the second transformer that's not backwards. So the two 115s are tied together. And then the output of that, the two 800 volt windings, the secondary, those are put in series for 1600 volts. So now I got 55 to 1600. And that's perfect, almost 30 to 1 turns ratio that I need to do that. And it, it works marvelously. And these things are rated, you know, you can use them up to about a little over 3,000 volts, just fine. Super, super low leakage reactants. So having the transformers in series like that, like, you don't lose much. The frequency response is, is crazy. Um, octaves on octaves on octaves on octaves past, you know, our human voice range. So it's like superior setup. And the two transformers cost me maybe, I don't know, like a hundred something bucks to get both of them. Anyway, that's what I'm doing. And then, you know, no DC on that. You must, must, must use a high voltage rating DC blocking cap. And Heising reactor goes without saying. W2BTK. Oh, sounds good. Now, are you using that to drive the amplifier? I know you've got a, uh, a big model there. Are you using a different rig to drive the amp? No, I'm using the Viking 2 right now to drive it. What size Heising reactor? Do you need that much power, or are you just swamping or somehow swamping the output of the uh, uh, Viking? I got a variac on the primary of the plate supply so I can bring it down without detuning. And it's the Heising reactor is a whole crap load of chokes in series. Um, probably, I don't know, 30, 40 Henrys. Yeah, that's really cool. I mean, you know, I've seen the Antec. I've actually used some of their transformers. I built a SDR receiver and used the Antec uh, as the uh, power supply. Uh, yeah, they make a really nice part. I never swept it for audio use, but, uh, you know, figure, you know, yeah, it's the, uh, you know, leakage inductance and actually, you know, what sort of, you know, what's the straight capacitance look like. And a lot of those power transformers, it goes to hell, you know, which, you, know you know, several hundred hertz, you know, get up to a kilohertz, and then they start to go and sell pretty quick. But, you know, yeah, it makes sense. I mean, the toroids, the, you know, they probably are, are, are much better, have much better high frequency response, and hey... It's a good cheap reactor, a good cheap uh, transformer. What the hell? It's better than it should. Let's just put it that way. When you look at the ratings of this stuff, I mean, these are just phenomenally made toroidal power transformers. Yeah, and the nice thing is they're very small, too, comparatively to, you know, a big mod transformer. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you know, just think, Richard, you know, I don't know if they're... I've never seen, you know, toroidal style mod transformers like, you know, towards the end of the uh, pre-modulated AM, uh, you know, broadcast industry, uh, the broadcast transmitter, uh, you know, run. It'd be interesting. I don't know if anybody ever made replacement transformers that were toroidally wound. I've got, you know, the mod transformer effect. I'm looking at it. You know, for my 4x1 rig is a, a doll, and it's, it's actually it's a replacement transformer for a uh, Collins 2.5 kilowatt uh, AM uh, transmitter that I got from Timmy. But, uh, you know, that was kind of the state of the art for, you know, conventionally core round transformers. But it'd uh, be interesting. I, I don't know if anybody ever did in the toroid uh, mod transformers, but certainly uh, would make sense. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know much about it. Um, I know a couple people have uh, have used them. I think Stu, uh, what the heck Stu's called? I mean, Stu, uh, God, he hasn't been on in a long time. He uh, he posted an article about using toroids uh, as as uh, as mod transformer replacements. But uh, yeah, yours sounds great, uh, Bill. So um, what are you what are you running there for output? And uh, I guess you're driving an amp. I hear something with the uh, Something pushing a lot of air over something. Yeah. Oh, and that's Stu, AB2EZ. And that's exactly where the idea came from. Um, and, yeah, there's there's a gigantic blower uh, on top of the amp here. And I'm running a YC-156. So, you know, I, I, that that's what we're doing over here. 
and it's what I got the SPL meter out today just to give you an idea of how loud it is in here right now the back of the amp is open the front of the air handler is open just blowing out in the room with an SPL meter uh, C weighting it was 96 decibels SPL sitting here with the wind noise uh, at the operating position so I have everything gained down as much as possible I'm trying to knock it down but there's literally 96 decibel noise floor in the shack right now W2BTK it's just like a lawnmower yeah or the uh, you know you're like it uh, you know you're at the airport no joke man yeah, standing in front of a 737 wearing earplugs I have to I have to I'm listening to you guys on headphones well, I like that though, you know, Bill, you gotta crank up the blower noise a little bit just for, you know, sort of the sound of power. If I bring the mic up there, like next to it, uh, it's over 100 decibels. I mean, I, I'm afraid to overload the preamp. I remember when Tim first got his 4x1 on the air, Joe, and he was sitting right next to it, and that, that's that's the sound he had. Oh yeah, I mean, uh, Bill, you, you, you wouldn't have remembered this, but... Tim had this 4x1 rig, and it just, it had just a great sound. When he'd come on with that sucker, oh man, it would just fill the room, and you know, it was like clunk. The, he had these contactors that would just, you know, ring through the whole uh, rack cabinet, just like kerchunk. Yeah. You you probably can't even hear my chunk over this crap, but there's some pretty, there's contactors going on here. The high voltage is, it floats at 3 kV on, re, on receive, and when I transmit it, it doubles. Yeah, it's, it's funny. I, uh, uh, I don't know if you know Chuck, but a uh, good friend of, uh, of ours uh, is going to get me a Variac. So I'm going to dial back the power supply. I'm uh, going to redo the, uh, the high voltage supply. I've got <clears throat> a lot more soup on the supply than I really need. And <clears throat> When I go to the high tap, it gets a little hairy, so I'm going to be able to back it down. Then I'm just going to clean up the uh, the, the uh, primary uh, circuit because right now I can go to 110 and 220, and I I have three taps, and you know I go from series uh, choke input to uh, capacitor input. I have a vacuum rail that shorts, shorts out the filter choke, but I'm going to clean that up and then have a variac so I can sort of have a little more control. Because it is nice to get to high tap, but man, at 5,700 volts on the plate. <laughs> oh, you don't have to tell me. This thing's even scarier than that. It's two plate supplies. Uh, they're both out of a T368 with that really, really well insulated uh, center tap. And the, that's the reason why I can put the primaries and
Your foot rise, and that's where all the commercial towers and all this stuff are up here on the mountain. What are you in northern Jersey? Yeah, yeah, I'm in, um, well, it's like, if you look up Phillipsburg on the map, that's pretty much where I'm at. Yeah, okay. Yeah, I got to leave. Right you're where you are. Anyways, this is W-A-1-I-W-Q for ID. W-2-B-T-K. Good evening, folks. K-1-G-T-X from Cape Cod. Good evening. Good evening. And Billy, holy cow, man. I just uh, put a new antenna up, so I'm hopefully, hopefully you guys are hearing me. It took me two and a half days. But I think it's uh, doing okay now. And you are about 40 over S9 here on a flex receiver. That's uh, pretty impressive. So that hell and whatever else you're doing there is definitely uh, putting out a hurting on this meter. I would attribute that to the miracle, yes, the miracle of thermionic emission. I'm still here, too. Just been uh, copying from the W3 over. LHB. All right, and that sounded like Perry and the rest of the folks. So I'm just, uh, I'm just a uh, transient here passing through, but I'll be throwing in some comments here and there, so carry on, gentlemen. Yeah, nice signal from the Cape. Where about the Cape are you? West Yarmouth, right by the Barnstable Airport, right smack dab in the middle. Yep. Yeah, I used to fly that airport for a month. Yeah, I'm up here in the coast of Maine, uh, in Brunswick. Yeah, you're also, uh, this, the, the band's in great shape, man. This is great. Uh, good signals tonight, so... Yep, yeah, I'm right there by the... I, actually, I had to go to the airport, and they had to actually uh, come here and some tests to make sure I wasn't going to interfere with telemetry because I'm that close. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you don't... You, you, you don't want to screw up the IL... Well, I guess these days they don't even use the ILS anymore. It's all it's all in the cockpit. It's all GPS. Mm -hmm. Well, they still You're an I... My, my uh, 10 meter beam, which uh, right at them, and yeah, they came over here and ramped it up to uh, 1.5 kilowatts and did some testing because, you know, and they said at least I don't have to put a light on it because I'm not in the flight path, but I'm definitely, you know, my my tower is 110 feet, so it's 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 asking for it. But anyhow, don't want to tie it up, but yeah, so you get it. It's uh, it, I'm, I'm pretty close to there. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you don't want to have to hang lights on. I like, guess it's a pain in the butt. All right, man. That thing sounded good, too. So, uh, and I, I think I heard some other stations out there real low. I, I have a, unfortunately, the, I put my antenna up, and I'm getting a lot more noise. So, I have an S9 noise level. So, any other stations in here, go ahead and pick it up, and I'll take a standby. Can we g -tick? Cal Perry, yeah, you're a solid 25 here, and you're right. Uh, everyone signals up about 10 dB, which is amazing. So, yeah, you're right, man. And yeah, good thing, yeah, the stress stress work sounds fantastic. Uh, no artifact sounds nice and clean to me, anyway. Thanks, man. Yeah, you seem stronger, too. I don't know how much stronger, but you definitely seem stronger. You can check, you know, go back uh, on the live feeds, you know. And uh, check your uh, 
check your audio, you know, see where you check your signal, see what it was, see what it is now, and, you know, see what it was a few days ago, or before you put your antenna up. Anyway, I'm going to shut up, I just want to make sure everything was still working, and I'm going to get to getting out of here, getting to bed, because I have, I have a three-day weekend, and I'll be up bright and early tomorrow morning, so if you're still up, <laughs> I'll probably be up when you're around four, so... 7-3 guys, everybody's sounding great. W3 MMR. I want to see what I'm doing in Perry's SDR. Hello. Good evening, everybody. The glass from the past. Hello, Perry. I think that's Billy out there. KD2 AFL. The glass from the past. Yeah, good evening, Daryl. Sounded good down this way. 7-3 guys, we'll catch up with you later. I'm out like shout. W3 MMR. Have a good one. Hey, Daryl. Hey, Bill. How you doing? Not bad. I got that hammer down. Yeah, I'm looking at it. Huh. Yeah. Almost in the corner down here. Are we worldwide? Worldwide. I think they call that the strawberry patch. Came out. Oh, yeah, I'm way up in the cherry bushels. Hey, if 26629 says that I'm worldwide, bro, that means something. And you know that. Yeah, you be in the tall cotton. <laughs> yeah, Billy, I'm sure if you're watching my stream, you see you got me in the corner. I didn't on the key that I looked at. Um, it was only about 45. Oh, well, you're right up on the edge of 60 on that one. Hey, Hall, did you bring me another beer? Yeah, it's right here, and I'm drinking it. Every rat. I got, I got key down time, too, now. Like, th this is trippy. Oh, uh, he's busy. He's, uh, in, he's in video game heaven right now. Pick up the bell and ring it, you know, like Dalton Abbey. <laughs> yeah, I think they did anything. Servant. I'm going to be in video game heaven soon, man. I, I took my Trump money and upgraded my computer system, and all crap's going to start coming in the mail. And it's going to be like Christmas. Yay! You know what, Billy? Your generation and your kids and your kids are going to pay, and their kids are going to pay for this. <laughs> man, well, yeah, I don't know. Oh, real quick, Daryl... You know a dude named Dark Shadow from Plainfield on the chicken band? Yeah, I heard of, I heard of that guy. Yeah, he, he he passed away last week from uh COVID. Who? Dark Shadow. Oh, I've heard of him. Oh man, I think I saw that on Facebook actually. Oh, wow. Okay then. Oh, and also a big shout out to to one of my best listeners out there, Ada, out there in Beechwood, New Jersey, on Beechwood Mountain. Big shout out. Sorry. That's all good. I'm getting texts text from Dave, and uh, <laughs> Ada's listening. I'm going to tell Dave, I say hello. He know who I am. The two big sixes and the nine. Oh, yeah, that's why. He, well, he texted me because he wanted, I guess, um, to let you know that. All right. And he says, Roger, Roger. Hi, Big D. That's kind of weird, huh? <laughs> Yes, it's it's third party traffic, but from hams. <laughs> so Hall had so Chuck says he's gonna put up an antenna. That's what he told me on the phone too. Yeah, well he's he's, he's getting into car season now, so good luck with that. Well, like he can't go anywhere with a car. Well, he can work on him. Yeah, hell yeah. Mm. 
He told me you get like 2,500 foot of marine grade, you know, like, uh... Mm -hmm. for the He's got at least that part done. Yes. And you guys out there ever hear of the Black Jesus out there? Oh, heard of the Black James Bond. I, uh, well, if you know who Tommy Two Watt was, John Dean, rest in peace, I have his Suburban in the garage, bro. Um, the old RDX Battlemobile. It's sitting there in the garage. I ran that thing for a while. I had a 3,000 in there. I had a 6,000 in there. Just to take it to competitions and stuff, but, um... This is this is RDX BTK you're talking to right here. Yeah, the Black James Bond. He was out of Baltimore. Ah. <laughs> oh God! Oh, I just uh, that was Roger was classic that night. Oh well. It's been a long time since I've been on the chicken band. Oh, yeah. I mean, is this... Do people still use it? I hear nothing when I listen uh, up there. What? I live about 200 yards from Route 495 here. And even on Channel... I don't know, the truckers still use Channel 19. I hear nothing on there. I don't have any C... I haven't had a CB antenna up in a few years here, but from the last time I, like, had a mobile or I was listening, yeah, not not too much stuff. It kind of died off. But aren't they the super channels? Aren't they still active? Yeah, they... Uh, channel 6, they call it the Super Bowl. Ask Daryl about that, man. He was... He was a bad man out there, bro. Like, I... Back before I was licensed in this now on the CB, I'd go on Channel 6. And if I heard Daryl out there, I was like, oh, that's it. All right, I'm going to go do something else. <laughs> it's like the Rico man, a bad man. So what did you run on uh, Channel 6, Daryl? Two CX-3000s in a 1978. 454 uh, Suburban with uh, two tall antennas. Oh man, <laughs> six alternators, three, three, uh, three twenties AC and three. I think it was three hundreds DC. Oh man, <laughs> the muddy water. Uh, two six three thousands. Uh, they must have cringed, Daryl, when you went out for the shootout. No, I didn't shoot out with it. Just for skip. Only skip. No shootout. <laughs> yeah, but there wouldn't have been a video recorder out there that would have handled that anyway. Surprise you could follow the children. <laughs> I was going to say, he might be uh, losing a little hair. I think that the reason I have a bald spot on top of my head is from sitting two feet away from that feed point in that Suburban. Uh, I did shootouts and stuff a little bit. Yeah, you do some uh, quad lease Nevilles and you're good to go. Oh, yeah, the Valiant and the uh, Log Periodic used to work very effectively down there. Hey, by the way, we're all making it into the porch receiver uh, down there on Beechwood Mountain. Everybody's sounding pretty good, too. It's like uh, one of those little three-foot uh, retractable antennas. Nice! Frequency. 
There's somebody, there's like a little tiny carrier in there. I'm actually getting a tiny bit of audio. I don't know if they're trying to get to us, but I can't really hear him, but I know he's there. Yeah, Boy, the there. band is really local tonight. Now we hear any, uh, any heterodynes from eight landers or nine landers. Uh, just the way I like it. Yeah, there's not very much uh, adjacent crap happening either. Uh, like a little bit, but my, 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 look at that. Man, that's bad. Eh, let it rip. Yeah, don't worry. I see digital on the right and the left. I don't know what the hell that is, but uh, not in the past band here. Yeah, I can see that just uh, one up about uh, eight and one down about ten. Yeah, it's, not, it's actually 15. You know what? I, I've got so addicted to this. I have a 40-inch uh, monitor on the wall for uh, the SDR. If I get on the radio and I don't have this thing on, I, I feel naked. Yeah, you almost go through a withdrawal. I know. It's amazing, Joe. Uh, I turn on something like the R2000 or the uh, SP600, and I'm, I feel like something's missing. Yeah, you know, it's funny. I was thinking about that. I've got the, the 390A, and I've got the uh, SP600, and I don't know. You know, I'm sort of debating whether I'm going to do a, ra you know, that's the one I got from Chuck to do a complete restore. And I don't know. You know, I'm just, uh, I'm so addicted to the, uh, the display. It's like, hell, I just, maybe I'll build another SDR receiver. Why don't you just get on a non? Well, actually, the receiver front end that I have is exactly what you're using, although I have a much bigger FPGA, so I can do a lot more signal processing. I have a, uh, a what's called a Cyclone 5. It's one of the Altera part, well, it's, oh, now it's Intel. But what your platform is, Rich, is what I built, but I have a, a little more scruffle back end to handle a little more DSP. But it's the exact same A to D as it's the LTCs, the uh, the 16 bitters that running at 122.88 megahertz. What's the A uh, What's the A to D? How many bits? It's the same one that you're in the amount. It's the uh, Linear Tech, 16 bits, uh, and it's running at the same clock rate. It's 122.88. Yeah, that's nice. Yeah, so that's just the receiver, sort of, it's sort of the receiver portion of the Anon with a, you know, and I've been dabbling, I've got, if I get the chance, I, you know, that's kind of the, the FPGA stuff is what I do for work. And, you know, the Anon software is good, but it's kind of, there's some things that I would do differently, but that's, you know, neither here nor there. What, uh, what software are you using? I can use, you know, the Power SDR or whatnot, but you know the Anon, they've actually they morphed their uh, their branch. And I haven't been following it lately. I know they, they uh, sort of branched off of Power SDR, and now they've got their own branch, right? Well, I'm using an old old version of Power SDR. I'm using version 3.3.15, and uh, I'm just I'm 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 happy with it, so I haven't upgraded. Well, uh, yeah, that's 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 the. I think I'm using 3.31, so very close to what you're using. Nothing wrong with it. But now tonight, I'm not using it. I'm using the actually the R390 going. Um, excuse me, the uh, 75A4 going through the. Uh, <laughs> you know, the soft rock. I like this too. I still have my soft rock, my ensemble too. I'm probably going to put that on the block. I don't use it anymore. I haven't used it in a couple of years. I like the, I've got two of those um, uh, SDR plays now. Yeah, I was thinking of getting one for the shop. You know, if nothing else, because if I want to do like an FFT or something, they're just handy. And, you know, for the for the money, you know, it's, you get 14 bits for 100 bucks. Oh, yeah, it's a little more than that. Well, the new one's in a metal box, right? Yeah, but I got one of the new ones uh, a couple of months ago. Were they a buck ninety-nine? 
I forget, buck eighty, something like that. Yeah, that's not bad. That's still, I mean, it, for what you what you get for that, I mean, you know, it's going to run circles around most of what, most of what you could get. You know, I mean, think about it for you know that that type of money, you know, adjusted for inflation and stuff. I mean, you know, that's a one hell of a receiver. Well, with the new version that I got, um, it runs circles around the old the old uh, RSP2 that I have. Um, which is which is very it's very uh, susceptible to uh, front end overload and you know there's a uh, there's a commercial uh, broadcast station and, uh, about a mile and a quarter from here and it really really screws up the front end so I had to use uh, filters uh, on the front end but I don't have to use it with the with the new uh, the new version. Yeah, that's they, um, they may have put some uh, bandpass filters in. That is the essential problem with SDR is, you know, these type of platforms. Effectively, think about it. It's a direct conversion. I mean, it's sampling, you know, up to, you know, uh, it's sampling at 122 megahertz. So any of the, you know, it, it's, it's basically receiving a fairly wide swath. That's the thing with those receivers, man. Like, I've been running an SDR for a few years, and putting a switchable attenuator in line with it was, like, the best upgrade I ever did. Because I would get out there and tell people, like, you're, you're 40 kilohertz wide, you're, you're splashing up and down. And, and a lot of the time, man, it was my, it was a product of my receiver and not so much what they were transmitting because I stick 20 dB in there, 15, 20 dB. And all that crap goes away, and they're clean. So that's like another thing people got to watch with those SDRs, man, because if you're hitting somebody with a crazy signal, they, they might see a lot of crap happening in the receiver that's not really there. It's mostly a product of the receiver. But that that's my experience with them. But other than that, like, you know, just being really, really sensitive, they're they're the best, dude. Like, QRM, this and that. It doesn't have a chance. I notch it all out. I hear whoever I'm talking to. It doesn't matter. Um, SDRs are great for that. W2 BTK. Is that a dongle you're using? <laughs> nah, I've got, a, like, a legit SDR. It's an older one. The company is RF Space, and the model is called an SDR IQ. Familiar with that, but I know the dongles use like a 8-bit, uh, you know, uh, A to B converter. But I, yeah, my early ones, I had to use a uh, attenuator and a passive tune circuit in the, you know, in front of it to uh, notch out all the uh, all the front end overload. But I don't have that with the new uh, the new RSP. It just uh, works great. It just hooked right up to the antenna, and uh, again, I got a. A 1KW 24-hour uh, broadcast station, uh, I can almost hit it with a rock. So, they've come a, come a long ways uh, in a few years. Yeah, you know, the key is to do a bandpass filter, and that's what I did, is have a uh, bandpass filter that basically tracks the frequency. You know, it's, it's a series that has six uh, pass bands. And you've got to limit, you know, if, I mean, if you've got, you know, a converter that's basically sampling everything, you know, you got a shortwave station that's, you know, like a gazillion over nine or an AM broadcast transmitter that local, sta that's local, you know, that's, it's going to, that's going to end up in the sampling uh, output. So really what you want, and that's why I like the, uh, putting the, uh, the soft rock on the, the ass end of the uh, 75A4. And on the 390, you know, it's like let the, you know, the receiver do all the uh, selectivity, you know, doing the uh, bandpass filtering, if you will, and uh, then, uh, you know, let the uh, converter just uh, sample the frequencies of interest. Then, you, then you're fine. But if you don't have some sort of a bandpass filtering, and I mean the attenuation, what that's doing is that's basically accommodating the fact that it. There is overload occurring, you know, from signals that are outside frequency of interest for you, but they're still in the passband of the, uh, the A to D. So, 
Yep, you do that. And, uh, you know, you get a, a set of uh, bandpass filters in the input, and uh, you're good to go. Yaw. And I think the 390 does that the best. You know, the A4 is good, but the 390 is uh, does it really well. But now, the 390 is kind of a pain in the ass to use. With the uh, SP600, with this soft rock, I have doing nothing. Yeah, Rich, because I think, do the, don't they have an IF output? Yep. Oh, yeah, hell yeah, Tr try that. And, you know, um, and you can get a little bandpass filter, you know, say, uh, centered around 455 and, you know, maybe plus or minus 50 kilohertz, 60 kilohertz, and that give you all the range and, you know, just, and then... Uh, you know, attenuate beyond that, and uh, I suspect that would work great. I always like the uh, the 600 as a band cruiser. Yeah, I love that uh, weighted uh, main tuning dial. You know, you just give it a boom and just watch it spin. Although, you know, is there anything to listen to anymore? I think all the short wave bands are dead, right? Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, so, you know, being back in the day when you just would say, yeah, you know, what's happening? You go up to, you know, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14 megahertz, just go listening. I mean, I think now it's just a vast wasteland. Well, it's a plethora of brother love stations. Jesus is coming! Put your hands on the radio. W-A-1-I-W-Q. Oh, God, excuse me, W2BTK. K1ETP. Uh, so, Hallhead, you get any plans for the weekend? Going to go out and homo the lawn or uh, just uh, hang out and watch all the masks walk by? No, I'm going to become a criminal this weekend. I'm going uh, to see my grandkids, uh, one set of grandkids on uh, Saturday and another set on Sunday. Uh, yeah, I think I'm going to uh, head down to uh, Marblehead and then head over to Burlington later, so... Uh, see the winch later this weekend. Err, uh, the winch. <laughs> How's she doing? Good, I mean, it's just... Well, you know, she's in a hospital and, and they basically... Uh, they have a... Uh, you know, it was a rehab hospital, but they've become the overflow for the... CV-19, and they've got uh, the whole ward set up now for CV-19. Yeah, Milford Hospital, uh, the last time I read, they had, uh, they had like 17 patients. This was not, not bad. You know, they have a whole tent set up outside and everything, and it's just not being used. Yeah, I even followed it. Is, is the case, is, you know, the occurrence in Massachusetts, is it leveling out at... Uh, you know, I, I heard some interesting stats. I was listening to BUR the other day, but, you know, I, I've been sort of mildly paying attention because they're trying to judge when we go back to work. But right now they're saying maybe it's it's June now. I honestly don't know. I think the uh, I think the ratio is incorrect. I think it's false. I think uh, the uh, numerator and denominator are skewed. Yeah, I mean, but there's just now so much pressure to, to get this right. Oh, I love it, but, you know, at, at some point, you know, it'd be nice to be able to go outside, go to my favorite watering hole and have a cold one without a mask. Yeah, well, that's not going to happen anytime soon, I don't think. Yeah, in this town, just last Monday they passed an ordinance that uh, you have to wear a mask going into any public place. I, I don't think you have to wear one if you're walking down the street, but I see a lot of people doing that. Yeah, I just uh, I just hope to, to get this testing shit straightened out, and then we can sort of, you know, move forward with science and data as opposed to Oh, Chicken Little, the sky's falling. 
Man, they're going to start ramping up the testing, and then, you know, like, as cases probably actually go down, they're going to report them all, see, like, they're going up still, and it's going to extend everything, I think. I don't know. This stuff sucks, but... Hey, man, I'm getting, like, disoriented. Like, the, the, the noise is so loud in here, and I've been sitting in it for so long. I'm going to try out some silence, man, shut these blowers off. And get off the air. It's been a few hours, but a lot of fun. And everything seems like it's working pretty good. This was my stress test today. Stress testing the amplifier. So, real nice talking to y'all. And we'll, we'll pick this up later. Catch you later. W2BTK. See ya. In three, LHB. All right, all right, Billy. It was good to hear you. Boy, that's a very impressive signal from Jersey. And uh, you know, you're doing you're doing it all right down there. It sounds good. I gotta go uh, to the uh, dispenser and get another beverage, but I'll be right back. See you guys. N three L H B. Can somebody pick up N3 LHB? K1ETP. Okay, that's it. I just want to make sure it's in turn. I had some uh, antenna problems here, so uh, I figured I'd get on the air and see if any of it, anybody could hear me. Well, you're not very loud, but the band's very quiet right now. Okay, we're from uh, Mansfield, Ohio. And uh, kind of looks like an on frequency. Yep, you're on frequency. What are you running? Uh, homebrew rig, a 4-250 uh, modulator for 4-125s. Okay, uh, well, you're about 10 over 9 here. I think you could probably use a little more audio. Well, the audio looks pretty strong on the scope. I'm hitting the negative peaks, so I don't want to turn it up anymore. But uh, thanks for the report. The name here is Ed, Echo Delta. And like I said, we're located in Mansfield, Ohio. And uh, this is a homebrew rig that I built about 20 years ago. And uh, things are a little kind of screwed up, so I figured I'd try to get on and see if I could be heard. Yeah, well, I'm hearing you. This is Rich in uh, Massachusetts. We've talked before, uh, Ed, but it's been a while. Yeah, it's been a while. <laughs> and uh, I also heard the guy from uh, New Jersey in there. He uh, used to live in my old QTH, Phillipsburg, New Jersey. Yeah, I thought last time I talked to you, you were living in New Jersey. How long have you been in Ohio? Oh, about 20 years now. Oh, jeez. Really? I don't know. Maybe uh, I've talked to you out in Ohio. I don't know. Yeah, like I said, I built this homebrew rig about 20 years ago out here in Ohio and uh, sold my homebrew rig back in New Jersey. And uh, I've got a T368 here, but uh, like I said, right now I'm running the homebrew rig. Yeah, well, your signal came up. Your signal is up now, and the uh, audio is filling out uh, a little bit more now that you're a little louder. Well, that's pretty good, old man. I'm probably going to sign on out of here because I wanted to make sure the thing was working okay. My freak meter went out a little bit and I had to rewire that. So uh, I just wanted to check this stuff out and make sure I was getting the signal out. Yep, yeah, it sounds good now. You're up to about 20 over now. Okay, fine business. 
Like I said, I'm going to probably jump out of here because I'm setting off the uh, carbon monoxide detectors in the house. They uh, kind of trip up when I transmit. Oh, jeez. <laughs> All right. All right, Ed, good to hear you. Take care. You too, 73s, old man. This is N3OHB, and we'll be clear. Ah, the sound that refreshes. It's going on awful easy tonight. Well, it's fast.